I love oh, Pikachu. I'm so glad that Chris had only my heroes, alive Pikachu and Sonic, were somehow like together the in the form of Sonic. Like there was an no ultimate being. I just want to be clear, you like cannot post like an image where you do Pikachu. Falling on Pikachu is not Dr. Christian. Wouldn't that be the one? Pikachu is I wish there was a gift on Twitter of Pikachu that I could use. What are you Hey everybody! Hello. Hey, Hi, what's going on? Thanks for coming. Thanks for graduating from Sonic U101. I, Ben Saint of Patreon.com/BenSaint, am here to give you an advanced lesson, Sonic U102, advanced Christery. Wow. Huh? Hey. Huh? huh? Yeah. Yeah. I'm ready. Yeah. 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 Let's yeah. Do it. Let's do it. Get ready. Do it. Get ready. Do it. Can okay. you skip class if I know for my doctor? No! I got the Garona. No! Oh, okay. No! Okay. <laughs> so if you remember, where's my notebook? Right here. Do you remember? <laughs> yeah. So if you remember, all right. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna talk about. I'm not gonna go over. We talked about the first time. Go watch the first lecture if you didn't see it. Um, but as we go, if. I mentioned something that like you don't remember what it was from before. Go ahead and raise your hand. Be like, I don't remember what that is. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this is like, this is bare bones. This is like a very basic skeleton. This is like I've left out a lot here. I'm gonna just be hitting on kind of the the, the main points. I'm gonna try to, but like, feel if you want me to elaborate on anything, go ahead, and I will try and explain it as best I can. Um, yeah, um, just feel free to feel free to interject whenever you want. Uh, DG. I don't remember what Sonichu. Oh God, okay. <laughs> Sonichu was when I'm joking. Okay, don't explain there it. was a Pikachu Go and Sonichu. Sonichu, Sonichu, and Sonichu, Sonichu one one one's in the description. You should not be watching this if you haven't seen it. Why would you do that? Why would you skip 101? That's right. Re you fool. You might, might want to rewatch. There's that. literally no reason to watch this first. No reason. Don't right. do it. You might want to rewatch that. Give that another watch. Go ahead. Uh. Is this going to involve General Christery or just haunt you? No, um, this is, I mean, we'll have to talk about Chris herself, but um, this is, again, we're going to be going through the comic itself, and I will talk about the author as necessary to explain mm -hmm. what the fuck's going on, okay? Let's do All right, do cool. Epic. First, I want to address the elephant in the room, the thing that has plagued me ever since the first uh, uh, lecture came out, and that is... Addendum, uh, I said Chris worked at Burger King. She worked <laughs> at Wendy's. <laughs> <laughs> you she, fool. She got fired know. from Wendy's. I get comments on this all the but time. Chris. Never, um. never darken my doorstep again, mm. commenters. <laughs> okay, so last we left. Uh, uh, at the end of the last lecture, um, the last Sonichu that had been released was part of episode 22, Sonichu Christmas, a boring slog of a domestic story of Sonichu, Rosichu, and their children, Sarah, Ro Sarah Rosie, Christine Rosie, and Robbie Sonny, doing some Christmas stuff. Mm. So we pick <laughs> up. So that was in 2009, Chris stopped uploading pages. And then in 2017, uh, just out of the blue, uh, she started doing them again. Uh, more pages started coming out. And we got right back into the holiday action. Uh, yeah. Right. So, so where the pages started up again, Sarah and Kevin. Kevin is the, the Jewish kid from her school. Uh, mm. They're playing video games. They're playing Call of Duty World at War. And Sarah's too good at the game, and she kills Kevin, and Kevin freaks out. And he's like, oh my god, I can't believe you killed me in a video game. <laughs> and she's like, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Here, I baked you a cookie. It's shaped like a candle, because you're Jewish. And I know you're into that. <laughs> but the flame of the candle triggers his PTSD from having been killed in a video game. <laughs> oh, no! And he flies off the handle, and he runs away. And, she, and Sarah's like, oh no, I should go. I should go. All right. Sonichu and, and uh, Robbie Sani are wandering through the streets, and they encounter a homeless woman. And uh, Sonichu calls a taxi and gets her to a soup hotel. Remember, uh, uh, Chris 
Uh, there's a thing in, in uh, Quickville, Chris says that like there's no home, or there are homeless people, but they're taken care of at these things called soup hotels, which are basically just soup kitchens, but you can also sleep there. Mm -hmm. uh, and Ravi Sani is like, oh, oh, I have so much empathy. I'm overcome with empathy for this poor woman. Ravi, Ravi Sani is very empathic, and this comes up later uh, in his story. Uh, they're walking along at another homeless guy, a black, no, I don't think he's homeless, he's just a guy. He says to Blake Sonichu, Black Sonichu, he says, Happy Kwanzaa, brother. And Blake Sonichu is like, God damn it. How, I'm only black because of the cherry cola incident. I'm not African American. Mm. Uh, I wish people would stop uh, confusing it. It's not the same thing. Mm. Uh, he doesn't like it. Sure. What was the cherry cola incident again? That was when, because Blake, aka Black Sonichu, was created in a laboratory by Dr. Robotnik? Or one of... Or maybe it was... Dr. Eggman was involved, wasn't he? Uh, no, Giovanni. I Giovanni's it, lab. It was... It, was, it might have been one of Giovanni's science. It was Giovanni's scientist. Oh, Bill! Wasn't it Bill? Yes. Yeah. I think so. Um, and they were trying to clone Sonichu, but he spilled cherry cola into the DNA, mm -hmm. and so he came out black and red. And that's why he's black. It's not because he's from Africa. He does not celebrate Kwanzaa. Do not wish Blake a merry Kwanzaa. <laughs> he doesn't appreciate it. All right, Simona. Remember, Simone LaRosachu was a big issue of contention mm -hmm. last time um, because some trolls, Alec Benson Leary and a couple others whose name I'm not, I don't remember all their names off the top of my head, but they basically said, Chris, Simone is based on someone else's character. You stole the design. You need to get rid of her. You need to kill her off from the comic. And uh, Chris reluctantly did so. <clears throat> Chris as an entity within the comic. Or outside. No. Outs no, Chris okay. Chris the author. Uh, uh, I wasn't sure if you meant trolls as in troll characters or real life trolls. Since there are trolls in Sonic. Yes, but these are real life trolls who convinced Chris that she needed to get the character out of here. And so she wrote in that uh, there was a terrorist plot. Well she put those real life trolls into the comic and they place a Voltorb next to the toilet, and while she's pooping or whatever, it goes off and it kills her. <laughs> Right. But in this, she recovers. <laughs> oh. Turns out she's got Wolverine powers and she's just fine. Uh oh, uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. That's a retcon, uh -oh. Chris. Silvana Rosachu and Maggie Chan hook up. Silvana Ooh. was the psychic type that was raised by a graduate on the moon. Maggie Chan was the kind of asexual, all-knowing uh, 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 god one who was monitoring everyone mm. in Quickville to make sure no one was having gay sex. Uh, and now, they're an item. Nate. Real quick on the Simone La incident, but the consequences of that were extreme, including her own daughter being like horrifically murdering the terrorists and like dismembering them. Is that what is that retcon? Well, if you remember, that was retcon before. Oh. Or, in the original writing, yes, the four of them are executed gruesomely by all the every member of the of the cast, including her like little daughter. They all like fucking drill drill holes in them and shit, <laughs> yeah. chop their heads off and <laughs> execute them by firing squad. But then because they were like Chris, that's really fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She went she went back and she um and she rewrote it. So actually, no, they're just banished to live on an Amish. Okay. Uh -oh. okay, I see. <laughs> it's even worse. They talk, they talk about Amish Christmas, and they imagine the four of them, they're all mm. giving gifts, like, oh, I got you some hammers, I got you some nails, I got you some wood, let's go raise a barn. Uh, <laughs> Things really turned around for them. Yeah, yeah they, okay. they're, they're making it work. Um, Christine, not Christine Weston Chandler, but Christine Rosie, one of the daughters mm. of Sonic. Um, in the middle of the Christmas play, there's an embarrassing situation where she evolves right in the middle of the play, and she doesn't fit into her costume anymore. Oh, so Sonichu, they gotta run home and get some clothes and bring really her some new hot. clothes. <laughs> uh, right on. And, uh, well, I she's an like adult now, for sure. idea that not even Pokemon has explored. Like, an awkward moment created through a Pokemon evolving suddenly at the wrong time. Uh, Chris is on the cutting uh, edge. Maybe. Um, Sonichu explains that, uh, hey, remember that one time in a previous issue, where I got really mad, and I was like, hey, people should stop calling me gay. I hate that shit. Mm -hmm. Well, he explains, hey, I'm not, ho I'm not homophobic. I'm not, it's not that I don't like gay people. I just don't like people mischaracterizing me as gay. Sure. He's like, sure. don't, let's not, let's not, just, just, don't, don't be mad. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they explain that Christine Weston Chandler is retired as mayor. Um, oh, I missed this. I, I missed this part. Yes, all the couples meet up at the mall, and like all the couples of the main Sonichu cast, they're all just kind of hanging out at the mall, and um, the couples are a little different. Last time we left, Punchy Sonichu was dating Layla Flaffy, 
uh, and Angelica Rosichu was dating Reginald the Sneasel, mm -hmm. but in this they're flipped, and now Layla and Reginald are together, and Angelica and Punchy are together. Mm -hmm. That will be explained later. Uh, this doesn't okay. quite. This doesn't go in in a purely. Uh, it's not entirely Not linear. Um, but they they're all talking about. Hey, did you hear that uh, Christian Weston Chandler is now Christine Weston Chandler? She is a female. Uh, and they're all like, "What? Wow, crazy shit!" <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they go and they meet her, and they say she's retired as mayor. Alice and Amber now runs everything as mayor. Christine is just kind of there to be sort of consulted. Uh, on important decisions, and Blake says, Hey, Christine, nice tits. And she says, Thanks, Blake, but don't get any ideas. Well, uh, has Sonichu also transitioned? No. No, okay, Sonichu so, is a man. Okay. Sonichu okay. is a guy. Mm. Did you? So, would you characterize this as like after all these years, like basically Christine, like through what is new about her worldview, like trying to morph the story to like match how she feels now? Clearly, right? Like, uh, like we're reorganizing characters and like explaining that Sonichu's not homophobic and like just all these kind of clarifications and like you know, yeah, yeah, changes over time. Yeah, it sure looks like it. Especially in like, yeah, especially through all here, there's a lot of okay. There's going to be a lot of like gender transition stuff going on through here, and there's going to be a lot of like explaining past stuff. That she said, because she, yeah, you know, she went through a lot between like 2009, 2017. She, um, yeah, like she, she uh, transitioned to be female, and she, she had a, you know, a lot, a lot of people would complain like Chris, you said all these really homophobic things, you like railed against the gay people, which she did. It was true, and there's a lot of verbiage here and there throughout this part that's like. You know, I didn't mean that, or I don't feel that way anymore. I'm sorry that I said that. You know, I was bad back then. It was all fucked up. Um, people give Chris a lot of shit for that. Uh, people are like, oh, Chris, what a hypocrite. You said you didn't like gay people before, but now you expect uh, us to respect your gender identity? Ha, huh, stupid. All right, I wish I didn't have to say this, but I interact with trolls on the internet a lot, and they really hate Chris, and they like misgendering her. <clears throat> and I gotta say, it's bullshit, don't do it. Uh, Chris has been living consistently as a woman for like, Five years now, she's as much a woman as any trans woman is. Trans women are women, and if you don't think so, fuck you. Can't wait to see the comments on this video. Uh, it's gonna be great. Um, it's not hypocritical to change your mind. That's the opposite of being a hypocrite. No, yeah, no. no, it's literally uh, the opposite. It's real. It's people just hate Chris. People yeah. just hate Chris, and they want to call her out for whatever they can. Probably and because even Chris be has matured shitty. more than they have. Over Five years. Wow, that's like. a sad <laughs> truth. You know, <laughs> Chris is a very flawed individual, but I really think she does show a lot of growth between like old yeah. Chris, who is like, oh, I hate all men, I hate the gays, um, mm. and now when she's like, hey. the gays are okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just hate most of them. Yeah. She 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 makes it pretty clear that she's changed her mind about a lot of things. So I don't really think it's fair to be like, oh, Chris, you're a hypocrite because you said you didn't like gay people before. She's sorry. She's sorry, everybody, okay? Mm -hmm. Leave her alone. Um, all right. Where was that? Oh, yeah, Blake compliments her tits. Okay, so episode <laughs> episode 23. Um, you're gonna find, all right? Let me just, let me just brace you for this, all right? So uh, uh, Chris sees all the Sanchus as her children. They all saw her as their father and now their mother. Um, this was not really a thing before, but going forward, there's going to be a lot of sexual tension between uh, Chris and the Sonichus, mm. and it's really fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> so, so just get ready for that. that. She's grown, but not that much. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't all positive. <laughs> okay, no, it's fine. I'm just, I'm just, just gonna, just gonna prime, prime that out so mm. it doesn't come as a surprise later on. Episode twenty-three: Simon Chu and Banana Funkle. Okay, so. Simona, right? She was based on another character, and that's why they said you gotta get rid of her. Uh, that character was Simon Chu, uh, who was based on Simon the Driller from Gurren Lagann. Someone just doodled, say, like, hey, what if Simon Chu, mm. uh, what if Simon was a Sonic Chu? Um, Simon Chu comes back, and Simona forgives him. She's like, because Simon, it turns out Simon Chu was 
he belonged to those trolls that set the trap that blew her up. But, like, they basically forced him to do it. So, like, for a while, everyone, like, Wild was Samoma's uh, husband, or, yeah, Wild Samoma's husband, and Sandy, her daughter, they blamed Simon Chu for the whole thing. They thought he was in on it. They said, like, fuck you, Simon Chu, you better never show your face around here again. I, I'm sorry, but so, so, but Simon Chu is, so, was a character by other people, but now is just being written into the story. Yes. Okay. So, so, yeah. Uh, Simon Chu was someone else's character mm. who Chris stole and modified to make Simona. And modified to make Simona. They said that's copyright infringement. Mm -hmm. You got to get rid of her. So his solution. She, she kind of did. Solution. But then she was like, "No, nah, actually, fuck that. I don't like those guys." <laughs> she brought. Not only did she bring Simona back. Yeah. She then went and just took the original unmodified <laughs> character yeah. and put him in too. Right. So okay. it's like double, mm -hmm. doubling down on the on the on the theft. <laughs> sure. But it's fine. <laughs> don't worry right. about it. Um, um, oh yeah, anyway, they, Simon Chi comes back and they're like, hey, Simon Chi, you killed my fucking mom, you killed my fucking wife, get out of here. And Simone was like, hey guys, no, 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 he was forced into it, those guys were bad dudes, they tortured him, you know, they tore, they were bad trainers, they tortured all the Pokemon, he had no choice but to do it, forgive him, he's my brother, I think he's your brother. Um, and they're mm -hmm. like, okay, sorry, sorry about all that. Um, Wild Simon Chi gives Angelica a razor claw. Right, because like I said before, at, this is before this. At this point, Angelica is married to Reginald the Sneasel. They met in dating education class, uh, which you might remember from last time. Of course, time. of course. Uh, he's like, hey, uh, Reginald the Sneasel, Sneasel's evolved with a razor claw. If he ever wants to evolve, here's one. And that night, she gives it to him, and he wears it around his neck, and he evolves mm. into a Weavile, and he goes crazy. And he just like slashes the bed up and he just starts tearing what? shit up. And he's like, and she's like, oh my god, Reginald, what's wrong with you? And he's like, I'm sorry, I'm a weavile now. I'm a, I'm a demon. I'm a monster and I will kill everything. <laughs> uh, I can't, I guess uh, we better break up. And she's like, dang. Yeah. <laughs> um, meanwhile, um, uh, they take, so they've made up with Simon Chu. And so Sandy takes Simon Chu. Simon has a fossil that he wants to revive, you know, like you do in Pokemon. So they go to the lab, and they revive the fossil, and it evolves into, it, it, it gets revived into this thing called a Bananasaur. Or, yeah, it's a Bananasaur, and then it evolves into a Bananasaurus. And it talks, it like babbles, right? They can't understand it. Even though Pokemon are supposed to be able to understand each other, they can't understand it. It's a banana dragon Pokemon. Like Tropius, which is kind of a... Uh, yeah, kind okay. of. It's a, it's a grass dragon type. It's shaped like a mm -hmm. banana. Uh, this was actually... Somebody just paid Chris, <laughs> like, $100 to put their, to put their like... Oh, see. To, to put the, I think someone made a game about a thing called Bananasaur. They just paid Chris $100 to put Bananasaur into Sonichu. Mm -hmm. She did it. Um, Bananasaur is like a rad bro. He's like a cool, like, hip teen. <laughs> um, and that's why the only one who can understand him is Punchy Sonichu, because Punchy is also a cool bro. Mm. And, uh, so they talk about, like, uh, skateboarding and karate <laughs> and, uh, you know, sports and video games and bro things. That's um, awesome. And, it t and the, the Bananasaur just announces in a thought bubble that his name is David Rotgard. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know where he got that name, but that's his mm. name. Um, but no one else can understand him, so Punchy's like, hey, Bananasaur, you're cool, come live with me. But he's got his girlfriend, Layla Flaffy, and Layla's like, uh, I don't know about this guy, mm. I don't like this bromance I see budding. And Bananasaur is a big asshole, you know, he, uh, he cheats on all his girlfriends in oh. high school. Uh. Uh, <laughs> uh, he, he, you know, he wrecked, he, he's a slob. Uh, they go to the dojo to train, and uh, Bananasaur has no uh, self-control, so he ends up like throwing Punchy through a wall, mm -hmm. and they all get injured, and Layla can't take it anymore, uh, and she finally is like, I can't stand Bananasaur, I'm leaving you. And Punchy's like, dang. Um, anyway, long story short, they, both these couples have broken up, and they, they switch. So mm -hmm. now Angelica, Punchy, Layla, and Reginald, and Bananasaur... Breathes, apparently? He breathes. I don't remember why he... I don't know if he ever leaves. I don't know what happens to him in the end. I think Chris just kind of forgets that he exists. But at one point, Punchy does take... Because he's a new type of Pokemon, they want to recreate him so his species will continue. So they take him to a daycare, and they make him breed with a ditto. 
And he's very, and, and David Rothgard is very disturbed to have to have sex with a ditto. Yeah. He, he sees it and he's like, is, is that a girl? And then it transforms into a banana sword. And Punchy's like, it is now. And David's like, oh no, I shouldn't have cheated on Caitlyn. This is fucked up. <laughs> 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 they, just make him, they just make him do it. And then afterwards he's like, I don't like sex anymore. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I'm over it. Um, yeah, and that's the story of the banana sword. Nate. Why uh, would Angelica, if I have it right, want to now date Reginald the Weavile if Weavile is in fact a demon? No, now? no, no. Um, or do I have Layla? Layla. Lay 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 finds Reginald, and I think maybe Reginald is just like he just calmed down. Okay. She like Layla like finds him in the street. So they could have waited that out like a day or two, and things might have worked out just fine. Maybe. Okay. Maybe. I don't know. But Reginald, does, he seems to be better by the time Layla meets him. Okay. So these these chapters are released like in pages online, right? Or they yeah. come they don't come out all at once. They co they come out in batches of pages. About when, how long does it take for one of these episodes to come out? Um, and it, are the batches of pages like each like just basically self contained stories, or do they like can? No, he'll just or they'll just come out like in however many Chris has done in a. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the, like, the release order was, but like, I think these took about... She started uploading them again in 2017, and they took like a couple months to come out. And like, an issue is generally about like 50 or 60 pages, so... so she was really churning these comics out when she, she came back. She re yeah, after like, eight years of not making anything, she suddenly... For a while, anyway. I mean, mm -hmm. there were there were stops and starts, but for a while, she was actually putting out like a respectable amount. Tom, eight years is a long time. It is. Was yeah. there any even minor improvement to the artwork at all? No. Is there ever? It's the same. <laughs> it's, it's it's been the same. It's been basically the same since like I don't know, maybe around like issue seven or eight. I think it pretty much peaked, and it has just kind of stayed Damn. the same since mm -hmm. then. Well, what are you gonna do? How how do you improve perfection? You got me there. <laughs> uh, all right, episode twenty four. Uh, epi this is episode twenty four, part one, catching up, um, and it, not episode twenty four, catching up, part one, because later on there's an episode twenty four, part two, mm. also called catching up. I guess they're supposed to be two parts of the same story. Mm. Um, so in this, now this one's a little weird because it's presented as a like play, or. It's like a skit that they're doing, but in real life, because Sonichu meets Sonic again, and Sonichu tells Sonic all like about stuff that's been going on in his life. But the Sonic is not actually Sonic. It's Silvana transformed into Sonic, but she's not like tricking him. She's like transforming into Sonic to play the role of Sonic in like a scene that they're gonna act out. Nay. Who's Silvana again? Silvana was, uh, I mentioned her before, she was one of the Sonichu, the, a black Sonichu egg that emerged from the rainbow mm. that came out from the creation of Sonichu and Rosichu. She, her egg was shot to the moon, where Count Graduan, which is like the big, kind of, kind of the big villain of the story, sometimes. I forgot how fucking insane Sonichu is. <laughs> <laughs> Silvana was born on the moon, or she hatched on the moon, Graduan cursed her with being a hermaphrodite. Right. For some reason. Right. I don't know why that was necessary. Oh, Silvana was the one who transformed into Black Sonichu and fucked Bubbles Rosichu, even though Magic Chan told her that is an imposter. Do not <laughs> fuck him. But she just wanted to. Um, uh, and but she's like good now, I guess. Sure. Okay. Good. I, I think I think the implication is that she and Magic Chan hooked up off screen, and now they're they're good. Mm. He mm. fixed her, whatever. I think she's not a hermaphrodite anymore, but I'm not sure. Um, where was I? Okay, so Sonichu and Sonic in this scene, they talk about Robbie. Remember, Robbie was very um, empathetic. He was very, he was overwhelmed with his empathy towards this homeless woman that they met in the street. Um, so Robbie's at school, he's getting bullied by this big gay bully. And the bully is like, hey, I don't like you. And he's, you're a jerk. And Sarah and Robbie are like, no, you're a jerk. And he's like, ha, huh, I'm gonna get you in trouble. And he turns to a policeman and he says, hey, policeman, these guys called me a jerk. And they're like, no, he called me a jerk first. And so the bully's like, hmm, I know how to win this scenario. And he grabs a boy and he kisses him. And everyone's like, whoa, he kissed a boy. I don't know what this was supposed to accomplish, 
but he does it. But it doesn't matter because it turns out that this cop is a jerk cop, and he sees him kissing this boy, oh, no. and he's like, "No love in Virginia." Uh, he's like, I "I'll put a stop to this mm. to this real magic." Virginia is for lovers. No, no, not no, not when the jerk so cops true. are in power. Mm. It's for virgins only. No one can have true love under the the the, the fist of Slaw Wheel Ryan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And the private villa of corrupted citizens. Um, anyway, Sarah just kicks the jerk cop's ass. And then she evolves, I guess, because she leveled up. And so now, Christine Rosie, who now Christine Rosichu, and Sarah Rosie, now, Chris, now Sarah Rosichu, they are both evolved. Uh, so Robbie is the only one of the Sonichu kids who is still in the, the baby, baby form. Mm. Um, so Sonichu Kaiju mentions, like, oh, by the way, Robbie is now Roberta. Robbie is also a trans woman. Uh, he just kind of he kind of, right. kind of mentions that. They'll go into it more later. Then they have a flashback to the end of Sonichu Ten, in which you'll remember that was the end of the battle, like the big the big battle against uh, uh, Slawil Ryan and Count Graduan and all that shit. Uh, Chris Chan had transformed into colossal Chris Chan, mm. the one that's not any bigger than regular Chris Chan. Um, but it's just as they're taking Slaw Wheel Ryan, who, or AKA Mary Lee Walsh, cause, because she goes by two different names. As they're putting her in cuffs and taking her away, Chris, Colossal Christian is just like, hmm, you know, now's a good time to reflect on the fact that I've always kind of felt like a woman on the inside. And then just like focuses on like, yes, feeling like a woman. And then, bleh, transforms, just, Sonic you body just becomes Girl Sonichu body grows big old big old tits. Very it's like yep, got got big old double D's. She's very careful to say uh, <laughs> that's impo that's important to her. Um, so and but it's only her Sonichu form that becomes female. Like I think Chris's human body stays the same. Like it doesn't physically transform. But this presents to Chris a, an opportunity um, and. Uh, I think Chris, Chris shows up at the scene to like say hi to Sonic, Sonic and Sonichu, and she explains that since I had a female Sonichu body and a male human body, mm -hmm. I decided to mix me A with, mix, with me B. Mm -hmm. Meaning uh, if, <laughs> that as a human, she decided, hey, what if I ejaculated and then put it up my, my Sonichu hole, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and, and it works. Yeah. What and the she, fuck? And she, and she gives birth with herself to to, uh, to Russell and Russell Sonny and Cynthia Rosie. Now that's how flowers reproduce. And the thing about that yeah, is that Russell right. and Cynthia are totally unimportant. Mm. They don't do anything in the story. Um, it's uh, in fact, Chris basically just immediately gives them to Heather Iglesias, the caretaker for. That, that took care of the, the Sonichu kids. She just like gives them to this this Mexican babysitter and is like, yeah, you take them. Okay. Uh, and, and that's it. That's all there's to say about that. But it happened. <laughs> uh, all right. right. So that's issue 11. Fuck. <laughs> um, all right. So issue 12. Wait, hold on. I want to make sure I go in chronological order here. Skip down to 24. Part 2? Uh, is that what you mean? Well, this... Because some of these came out... Okay, so I think... It looks like these were around the same time. Alright, I guess I'll just... I'll talk about issue number 16. These were not created in order. These are sort of retroactively numbered. Mm -hmm. Around May 17th, I guess, Chris started doing issue 12 and what would eventually be called issue 16. Issue 16 is not very important, and it's only like three pages. It was going to be the backstory for Count Graduan. Uh, I have some notes here. There's just three pages explaining about, oh yeah, hey, I'm Count Graduan. In my, in my past life, in my past lives, I was some stuff. I was a great warrior. I fought the French in the Hundred Years' War. I died, and when I died, I saw a vision of a man in a chicken mask who said, uh, you're not done, buddy. You're mm. going back. Mm. And then he was reborn as an English, <laughs> as an English soldier in, who fought against the colonists in the Boston Massacre. What? <laughs> He fired at the Boston no. Massacre. No! Yeah. Why? I don't... And then he went back to England and he learned magic from a Jewish family and became a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, went, on, <laughs> went on to die of old age. Uh -huh. And then he was a real historical figure named uh, Bernard Montgomery. 
who fought in World War I and World War II. And you can, you can look up Bernard Montgomery on Wikipedia if you want to know about that guy. Was he American? Where did he, that did he was, fight uh, for? I think he was English. Okay. I think right. Bernard Montgomery was English. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, why is this Don Chu character a English war hero across various centuries? <laughs> why exactly? Um, I think... What does that have to do with anything? I mean, I'm just guessing here. I think maybe... You know, I think maybe... I saw a documentary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. well, well Chris, Chris for a while, was kind of into the fact... She she thought that she was descended from a, a, a famous person called Anne Boleyn. And yeah, I'm not, and Henry VIII's uh, second wife. She was English, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I, th well, I think yeah. that maybe Chris is... She, I mean, she was kind of into her, like, Cherokee ancestry. She thought that was cool. I think maybe she might have gone through a little phase of thinking that her English heritage was cool, too, and maybe looked a little bit into that, because it actually is mentioned later, and this is maybe not connected, but I might as well mention it. Later on, it said that Russell Sani grows up to, like, be into his English heritage. He, like, he li likes English history, and Cynthia Rosie is into Cherokee uh, history, because, I mean, because they're both basically clones of Christine, so they both have the same ancestry as her. So, I don't know, maybe she was just kind of into it. Okay. Here's the thing about Anne Boleyn. Anne Boleyn was Henry VIII's second wife. Oh. She had a daughter, Victoria, yeah. Queen Victoria, most famous queen in English history, the virgin queen who had no children. Chris is not the descendant Definitely of the has virgin. No, there but are no descendants of Virginia Anne the colony was named after Victoria, so maybe that's what yeah, he yeah, means. You mean or Elizabeth? Something? Elizabeth? I thought it was Victoria. Victoria was 1800. Maybe I'm children. fucking this whole she thing. She had up. children. But the point is that her... He said thought. Anne Boleyn, though, and it was... But the point is that Anne Boleyn doesn't have any descendants. Her, Correct. Her daughter well, was the Virgin Queen. Yes, that's right. I believe. Okay. Uh, let me know in the comments if I'm wrong, but I don't... But I, I think that's right. You are correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, issue 12, episode 25. To be or not, spelled this way for some reason, to be a tom girl. Ooh, like naughty, like a naughty tom girl. And this is this is the chapter about Robbie. This is about Robbie becoming Roberta. Mm. Robbie doesn't like he doesn't like violent movies. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Other boys like violent movies, and when Robbie sees violence in a movie, he feels bad. He feels sad. He doesn't like it, and he talks to his family, and they're all like. Hey, that's fine. You know, not all boys are like that. You know, you don't have. You can be a sensitive and be a boy. That's that's all good. But he's like, mm, nah. I think it's more than that. So he goes to Magic Chan, and Magic Chan is just like, yep. I've looked into your soul. You have a female soul. And Robbie's there like, is. thanks. <laughs> <laughs> that's his. That's his exact line. Just, thanks. Period. Uh, so, so Magic Chan. <laughs> So he tells, so, so, so Robbie's like, oh, cool, I guess, I guess my soul is female. And in this universe, souls are real, so that's, that, that's, that's fine. It checks out. Checks out. It's scientifically accurate. Right. So, um, he tells his family, and they're all like, cool, proud of you, mm -hmm. and in a truly memorable <laughs> Just no. something about the phrases, family accepts. Roberta ejaculates. Yeah. Yeah, what's that about? What's well, on there? He, he goes to... Oh. He goes to... She, right? Well... Oh, the, yeah, okay, yeah. This is like, as she's... I guess she's Roberta at this point. Mm -hmm. She goes to um, her sister's rooms, and one of them, one of them is Sarah or Christine, it doesn't matter, and, and they all sit on the bed, and, he's, and she's like, hey, Sarah, Christine, I am a girl. I'm gonna be Roberta now. And they're like, hey, love you, proud of you, hug. Mm -hmm. And then, and, and that, and this, this is the, this causes uh, Roberta to evolve into Roberta Sonichu. Female, but still a Sonichu. This is a thing, okay. it's later said, it's like, yes, Rosa Chews can be male, Sonichus can be female. Gender separate from sex. Yes, yeah. They, yeah. And so, and for some reason, at the moment of evolving, Roberta just jizzes on the floor, on his sister's rug. And they're all like, huh. 
Whoops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Roberta's yeah. like, will I find this if I search Sonichu Roberta ejaculate? They don't <laughs> show it. Oh, they okay. just kind of like, they're just kind of like, look down at her lap, and she's like blushing, and then in the next panel she's like, well, we cleaned up the mess with rug cleaner, but let's not talk about that. <laughs> All right. oh, that's all I gotta say. And that's it. That's what happens. Look, it's yeah, not weird. Damn. It's not weird. It's natural. Mm -hmm. It's natural. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, Roberta gets on hormone therapy, and Magi Chan gives her a audio CD to listen to, to do, like, hypnosis that will, um, you know, physically transform her body. Chris believes in real life that this works, by the way, that you, could, you can do, like, audio hypnosis that can, like, change your, your eye color and your, your body and stuff and like make you more feminine, for, for example. So, Magi-chan gives her some, some audio CDs that will do this. Works like a charm. Could Magi-chan just use Magi-chan's magic powers and do this? I don't know. Okay, okay. I'm not sure. Maybe not. So there's like a lot of like psychosexual like relationship like gender identity stuff going on in Sanchu nowadays. Yeah. How, At this point there yeah, is. Yeah. yeah. How like... In depth, like you say, that like Roberta like gets on hormone therapy and is like trying actively to like like get hip hypnotized. Like, how well does it track the like trans experience in this Sonic Chew issue? Like, is it really trying to go in on that angle, or is it just I mean, like I, I, would, I would assume that this is like pretty much like what Chris Chan's experience. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think Chris is basically just Chris is basically <laughs> writing about her. Transition experience. So, Sancho has through. always been extremely autobiographical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I think she does mention because because there's a lot of like big blocks yeah. of text. Right. I think it's she does mention that like Christine also like you know got on hormone therapy. I right. think she mentions specifically the hormones she's taking. She talks about she also like listens to uh, uh, hypnosis audio. It's and working stuff. out really well for her, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. She's doing good. Um, anyway. Um, Roberta Sonichu meets a nice girl, Rosichu, named Mimi, and I guess they are dating or whatever. And then in celebration, Rose, uh, Roberta, Roberta Sonichu puts on a rainbow wig, and Cloud steps up to the sky and performs everyone's favorite, the Sonic Rainbow. Yeah. <laughs> from, from My Little Pony, and everyone's like, yay, she did it, that's my sis. Uh, Why? Everyone applauds. You talk about cloud stepping. I, I assume that is what it sounds like, she, but yeah, she says like, "Oh, I can like make thunder clouds under my feet and just run up them." Why? Why? Cool. Why, why can well, because you have to go in the sky. No, I mean, to... why does she have that ability to do that? Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm why, sensing why My Little Pony is story? entering. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is this where it starts? I think this is where it ends. I I, I think this is the <laughs> first like. Overt reference to My Little Pony. Mm, mm. Yeah, this is. The but it, it could probably be assumed that Chris Chan was like into My Little Pony in these interim years. Pretty bad. Twenty seventeen's right. pretty probably late yeah, to right. be. She you know. she she was she got in on it late. Like she okay. wasn't into My Little Pony when it was like peaking in like twenty twelve or twenty thirteen, as you cover in your lecture. Mm. She got into it like later, kind of towards the end. So yeah, she might have been getting into it around like 2015, 20. She probably had been into it somewhat for a while, and it was just now starting to creep its way into uh, the the canon. Mm -hmm. um, okay, um, episode twenty six, prideful. So this one opens in medias res, in media res. Uh, uh, Christine is battling Reldnock. Remember, Reldnock is her, her, her dark. Opposite, he was Nate Sirk, but then he transformed into Reldnock, and he got evil Sonichu powers. Uh, and they they battled, and he this is the one who was Chris but gay. Chris but gay. I was Chris, ask, Chris but gay. But the Chris trans, how does that play into this? Uh, Do, is that, are they also trans? No. Okay. No. Okay. Uh, if, in fact, uh, later on, Reldnock says like. He's surprised to see that Chris is now Christine, mm. but he's like, well, I'm not changing my name. Sure. <laughs> and she's like, well, why would I expect you to change your name? <laughs> 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 and he's like, okay, fair, fair enough. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, that just reminded me, I'm just curious, what about the, uh, was it Crystal or Christine, his sister, who existed parallel to... Yeah, 
Crystal's still around because mm. they rescued her from the dark mirror hole. Mm. She's she's in this chapter. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so so all right. It's in the middle of a battle. They're in the middle of like a subspace void. Uh, they're having a fight. Uh, Chris has like a monologue about. Um, and by the way, uh, even though she's Christine now, she still goes by Chris, so you can still call her Chris, and it's, she calls herself that. Yeah. Um, uh, they're having a, a, a... She's monologuing about, like, uh, the human nature. Some people are just real fucking evil, and you just gotta fight them. <laughs> too uh, and too also, real. And, then, and also, some people ask me why I don't reboot the Sonic Shoe series. Well, that would be erasing history, and, like, it's bullshit. I'm that. Yeah. Meanwhile, she's yeah. fucking a retcon half the damn story. Uh, no. Wait, 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 she's, not she's not, she will a little bit. Can you well, imagine literally sorry. any other franchise having this integrity? Yeah. Like, no. Like, no. One. I mean, I'm sure there's also, like, that would be a lot of work. There'd be a lot of work oh, to yeah, rewrite yeah. this whole story. But also, she's like, no, this is the history. This is how it happened. It's like a record of my life. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. Based. Yes, yeah. Based. Mm -hmm. Based Christine. Better than uh, George, uh, not Costanza. Lucas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, that's the two, the two Georges. <laughs> so, flashback from the fight. Everyone is at the Quickville Mall for the SLGBTQ Festival. Chris. Yeah. Sonic Chew? Is that the first letter? No. Oh. oh. Straight. Oh. Christine they need this. White lives <laughs> matter. White lives matter. She, yeah. She she includes the S because oh, she includes damn. straight people as allies, and we're all it's you know. I feel so fun. included. I know, right? It's very it's pretty based. Yeah. Pretty based on yeah. it. <laughs> so everyone's there. You know, Crystal's there. All the all the Asana users are there. Basically, just every like Patty Chan is there. Every fucking character in the world is there. <laughs> nice. <laughs> even uh, even um. Russell and Cynthia, mm. her kids, show up with Heather Iglesias. She's like, hi, okay, bye. <laughs> uh, um, uh, Chris is showing off her new psychic powers because she's been training with Magichan. Mm. Magichan's been showing her a thing or two about how to be a cool psychic magic person. Um, so, but then, Relnak shows up, right? No. Relnak comes and he's like, mm -hmm. hey, I got a bone to pick with you. Uh, we left on we left on bad terms. Wait, hold on. Let me find my notes here. Um, and and like I said, he is surprised to see that Chris is Christine now. He's like, hey, um, what what the heck is is the deal with that? Um, it, so and he, and he says that okay, after you defeated me, I went back to being Nate Sirk, right? My pre, because because Nate Sirk is sort of like the. The normal version, it's Giovanni's son, and mm. then when he got Sonic Two powers, he became Relnak. But he went back to being Nate Sirk, who was also Kel's boyfriend. Kel was Rosa Chu's original trainer. And he, like, woke up with her again, and they kissed and stuff. No. Yes. <laughs> true. But then he was like, you know what? I haven't truly found myself yet. I have to go on a journey of self-discovery. I must go and complain at Christine Weston Chandler, or at, at Chris, because he doesn't know about the tree. I must go and tell CWC what a piece of shit he is. Oh, <laughs> and that's what I'm gonna do. So he gets on his cool motorcycle and he <laughs> across the country from wherever, <laughs> and uh, he arrives and he's like, "All right, I'm gonna give you a piece of my mind." And he goes on a big page-long rant, and the the rant is basically like every it's everything that the trolls say about Chris. It's like you know you're lazy. You're stupid. You know you don't work. You don't have a job. You are. You're a bad artist. You're. Uh, you're. You know. You're. Um. You're a. Uh, a hypocrite because you said all these bad things about gay people. He even mentions, "Hey, you tried to cure my gayness with that whole. Uh, right, with right. that whole like blood future thing in Sonic Two Ten, I think, when Chris goes to the future and to use his own blood as the pure." anti-gay mm -hmm. base for a, a gayness vaccine and then comes back and introduces it to the water supply to cure gayness. He's like, you tried to cure gay my gayness. That's really fucked up of you. You suck. And then uh, Chris is like, she has a, 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 a big response rant in which she basically, she gives a lot of excuses like, you know, oh, I'm under a lot of stress, oh, my life's really hard. Uh, but she also says that, you know, yeah, it was kind of fucked up of me. Yeah, I was kind of homophobic. Yeah, I said some pretty fucked up shit. Sorry about that. And Relnak is like, uh, yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let me just make sure I'm not missing anything here. Da, 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 da. All right, basically Relnak's like, 
Okay, cool. Well, I still haven't fully found myself yet. I haven't gotten the Xbox achievement of fully finding oneself. So I'm going to go on my spirit quest and do that. But as soon as he leaves, Count Graduan, uh, who is now on the moon again, in the body of Metal Sonichu, mm -hmm. who we haven't seen since, like, Chapter 2, he speaks through the, the time, and he through, through space, and he's like, Hey, Relnak, I know you just forgave Chris, but... Hey, what if I gave you Sonichu superpowers again? Would you be evil again and fight her? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he does that, and Relnak comes back, and he's like, actually, we're gonna fight. Magic Chan's like, everyone, a battle's about to begin. Um, Chris has a pre has a premonition. He sees Cole Smithy, his real life brother, who is a real human being, who is a movie reviewer. He sees that Cole Smithy is about to ambush him from behind. <laughs> So he uses double team and creates a duplicate. So Cole Smithy just he attacks the duplicate and then Chris goes from behind him and karate chops him and knocks him out. But then he cries like, Oh no, my brother, how could I have done this to you? So and there's also an army of jerk hops that attack. Uh, all the Sonic shoes fight against them. Uh, Chris and Relnek, they go into the time void, and this is the battle that the episode started in, mm -hmm. while he's having the monologue. And then um, but you know, they win. Uh, Christine traps the jerk hops and Cole Smithy and I think Relnak also in the cube, in the subspace cube that she just has now. Um, and that's it. Uh, they win. Sonic Shoes win. Quick Bill is saved. And it ends with the dedication to Robert, who you remember, Robert <clears throat> Chandler was uh, Christine's dad. Bob. Yes, Bob. Mm. Go, Bob the Lumberjack. Um, it ends with a dedication to him because he died in between like the. I don't remember what year it was, but it was like sometime in this period he died. Um, and it is like a loving dedication to him, but also it's like, yeah, he never accepted me being a girl. He always told me to be a guy and put pants on. Uh, but, you know, love you, Dad. Bummer. Oh. Yeah. Um, and then there's another page where she's like, by the way, in a past life, I was a hippie. I was a girl hippie and I went to Woodstock. Uh, and then okay. there's, a, <laughs> there's a drawing of her as a hippie at Woodstock. You know, Woodstock wasn't that long ago. I mean, it's a, it's, in a past life, in, in the misty dark was, but, I mean, it was before Chris was born. If you I were think. like a sexy young girl at Woodstock in the 60s, that would make you like a... must have died pretty young. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, if you're a drug addict hippie who goes to Woodstock... Went to Woodstock, died, 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 died at Woodstock. Died Woodstock. What percentage yeah. of the attendees at Woodstock died since then? When was Woodstock? There were people who died at Woodstock. When was Woodstock? The 67, something like this. Well, Chris was born in... 80-something. 80-82. That's a pretty narrow window, but okay, it could be done. Uh, right. But how did Chris come upon this knowledge? I don't know. <laughs> just, just made it. I, I assume she probably had like a dream or something Some, like that something and believed it. Happened. Yeah. Okay. I saw a documentary on Woodstock, so that's pretty based. Okay, so we're back to part two of episode 24, Catching Up. Mm -hmm. Sonichu and Sonic, actually Silvana, um, they're talking. And Sonichu tells Sonic about a funny story about his wedding with Rosichu. And this story is basically, there was a fan comic, kind of like a, a, a funny, like, dark fan comic about, like, how, what if Sonichu was really fucked up? And in this, like, Sonichu and Rosichu are about to get married, and Rosichu is, like, anxious, and then she, like, catches Sonichu in, like, a room with Bubbles, and Bubbles is naked through, like, a very contrived series of events wherein mm -hmm. she had to use Surf to do something and it washed all her clothes off and Rosichu was like, oh no, you're cheating on me. And Sonichu was like, oh no, bad luck. How could my luck be so bad? And there's like an evil <laughs> rabbit that is like, kind of, kind of like manipulating his luck. He's like an evil curse rabbit. <laughs> and, but, but this is basically a rewrite of that fan comic in which that all happens, but then Bubble, Rosichu comes in and she sees Bubbles naked, but then she's like, oh wait, the floor is wet, oh, she must have used Surf, oh, huh, how could I have been so silly as to think you were cheating on me with Bubbles? I love you both, you're my great friends, and I can't wait to marry you, so uh, Happy ending. Um, and, that, and that's that. Uh, and then Sonichu tells about the time Rosichu fell down the stairs, broke her legs, and got really fat. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, it, there, she's at the mall, the story goes, Rosichu was at the mall, um, she fell down the stairs, broke her legs, had to go to the hospital for a while. While she was there, she ate a lot, she put on some weight, she got home, uh, and she kept eating a lot, and she got really fat. And everyone's like, hey, why is Rosie getting really fat? That's kind of fucked up. I don't like it. And Sarah gets really upset about it, 
but then she starts to eat a lot and get fat too. Um, and Sanji's Son kind of into it. Son yeah, Sanji's like, hey, Rosichu, you're putting on a lot of weight. And Rosichu's like, yeah, I know, I just really like food now. And Sonichu's like, hey, but your belly's kind of squishy, eh? Oh, no, shit! Uh, it's kind of soft and I kind of like it. No. So it's... <laughs> no! Well, so they, go to, so they go to sleep, and that night, Sonichu dreams of a gross, nasty pink cave. It oh, kind, God. It kind of looks like the inside of that, that dungeon in... in, in um, <laughs> Ocarina of Time, the one you're inside. Jabba, 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 it looks... Jabba, yeah. It kind of... I'm not really sure if it's supposed to be like the inside of a body, but it looks to me like Jabu Jabu's belly. It's mm -hmm. all pink and gooey. So I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Vagina or not? I mean, judge for yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a vagina then. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, that's what it seems like to me, but I can't prove it. Um, so, but he hears the voice of Count Graduan, and Count Graduan is like, I've put, I've challenged you, like, you'll never escape my devious trap. The only way out is through this river, and it is a river of pickle juice that is flowing through this cave. Mm -hmm. And so Sonichu has to swim through this pickle juice, but the pickle juice makes him get really fat. So now he's really fat. And then he get, but then he gets out of it, and he comes upon this tunnel, this, like, hole that he's got to, like, crawl through, like that one... Who's that horror manga guy I asked before? Junji Ito. That one Junji Ito where you gotta go through the hole and it stretches you out? He's gotta crawl yeah. through this hole, and he says that, like, he squeezed through this tight hole, and then, like, but the slime in the bottom third of the hole, like, slimmed him down for some reason, so he comes out the other side, like, squeezed thin again, and he's mm. all slimy. Uh, and then, so, that challenge having been bested, uh, Graduan is like, <laughs> Before you are two doors, Sonichu, both rooms are on fire. In one, Rosichu. In the other, Christine Weston Chandler, your mother. Mm -hmm. You must choose. And Sonichu's like, ah, oh, damn, why must villains be so evil? Mm -hmm. but, he, but he chooses Rosichu. He chooses to save Rosichu, but he breaks through the door, and he finds that Rosichu has already broken through the walls between the rooms and saved Christine. Sick. So they all, they all get out of it. Like, Yay, happy ending. He wakes up and he finds that he's being smushed under Rosichu's body. Aww. And he's like, ah! So he wakes up and he's like, boy, he's had a really fucked up dream. And Rosichu's like, that's nice, Sonichu. Hey, I've decided I want to lose the weight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Rosie and Sarah start jogging, and two weeks later, in two weeks, they go from morbidly obese to exactly how they were before. Um, and that's it. That's the story. Yeah. I don't like any of what she's no. described to me. I don't like it either. It's really bad. It's fucked up. Did Christine, like, get fat and lose weight? Is that a Not at that speed. No. Christine's about the same as ever. Mm. So this is just purely... Maybe maybe it was like a fetish that she got into and out of in a very short span of time. I'm just trying to wrap my head around why this would she, happen. She talks about, like, losing weight and eating healthy sometimes. But, like, she's always looked pretty much the same. Uh, maybe from her perspective, she lost weight. Maybe she like thought she was losing some weight, and mm. maybe a little bit. I don't know. Um, Something very important is about to happen. Yeah. All right. So, uh, wait. That was that was May twenty seventeen. Okay. May twenty. Okay. We didn't get to the musical epilogue or night. Story. Oh yeah yeah, that's right. That leads into the next one. The final pages of episode twenty four part two. Um, are, um, there's just a little, like, musical scene in which we see a pony OC. This is Chris's pony OC. Her name is Nightstar. And Nightstar is, as Chris explains, a very important special Sonichu. Hmm, whoa. The next, okay. the next issue is issue 12-9, and it is called 12-9 12, 12 because Chris is superstitious about the number 13. Uh, but then she just called the next one number 13. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just 12-9 because it is, I don't mm. know. So this is the story of Nightstar. And Nightstar's deal is that, um, let me... 12-9, okay. So Nightstar is a unicorn from Equestria. Mm. Nightstar's a unicorn from Equestria. She was born on the same day as Chris. Um, she basically would have, she was also autistic, um, she would have visions, she would like see through the realm, the portal between worlds, she would see visions of Chris, and she would become obsessed with this boy that she would see in her dreams, right, or in her visions, 
And um, she also canonically drew the equestrian pony versions of the Sonichu comics. So she's basically just... She is Chris. She is basically Chris, yeah. but in Equestria. Um, <clears throat> although they, they will meet each other uh, later. Um, Worlds will collide. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And importantly, she, she like Chris, she has one blue eye and one green eye. And the reason why, and it says so, and this will become very important to me personally later, is that uh, she got some slime in her eye. She got some slime in her eye, and it turned her eye green. Mm -hmm. Where did the slime came, come from? Maybe we'll, maybe we'll find out later. Maybe we'll get a, a story expounded upon with that. Mm. Um, so anyway, Night Star is a, is a pony. And she can transform into an Equestria Girl-style human, like in the movie Equestria Girls, where you go through the portal. But she can just do it whenever she wants. And she can also has a Sonichi form, just like Chris does. She also wears the medallion and all that. Mm. So Night Star... She has a crush on this girl, pony named Diamond Melody. They go to a vinyl scratch concert. Uh, Diamond turns out to be a troll, but then she gets with this uh, Vietnamese uh, pony named Kun Chinugit instead. Mm. Uh, this is a so this this is obviously is a, his name Cunt Nugget? Yes, a, tr oh. a, tro a troll a troll made this name up, and Chris didn't get that it was a joke. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Some, some troll was fucking with her, and he was like, hey, yeah, put this character in. This is, it's a Vietnamese name. No, it's traditional. Uh, um, and Chris was like, yeah, no, okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> and and uh, Kun, no. Kun is like, been there. that's been unrealistic. <laughs> Kun is like a science guy. He likes science, and Night Star also likes science. Really the bin saying of the <laughs> Uh, so, and then a bunch of boring stuff happens, and I, I'm, I don't even want to talk about it. Sure. She, Nightstar has to, a mission, she has to go battle a CPU villain, I'll, I'll explain, oh, called no, Ray. No, she no, loses, that's... she goes into a coma, uh, Kunt Nugget takes care of her, um, uh, so they move in together, she gets another mission, she has to go help some bird pirates, they're from the My Little Pony movie, uh, they succeed, they solve the conflict. They resolve the dispute. Nice. It is <laughs> yes. It's it's epic. Um, it's really long, and I kind of just skimmed over it. It doesn't have any relevance to anything else that happens. Mm. Um, 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 okay. So this continuous name and this CPU stuff. Uh, the CPU thing is from a. There's a, a video game. I think it's a visual novel. I don't know anything about it. It's called uh, Hyper. Hyperdimension Hyper Neptunia. Neptunia. Hyperdimensional Neptunia. Yeah, it's a it's an RPG series, yeah. okay. not a visual novel. Okay, but it's this. Yeah, it's, it's where the like the characters are all personified what? anime girls of like consoles, like Sega consoles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That that's. So I guess, so around this time in real life, there was like a guy or maybe a couple of guys who would later go on to be called the Idea Guys, mm -hmm. and the Idea Guys were kind of based. But also very cringe. Oh, mm, no, uh, I yeah. don't know how to feel. <laughs> but but uh, so they they got in contact with Chris, and nobody really knows exactly how it all went down. There are some transcripts that have been leaked by some people who were trying to look out for Chris at the time. Um, basically, they got in with Chris, and then they started to manipulate her by like pretending to be her characters, contacting her, and like making shit up and saying and convincing her that like fucked up shit was going down like they made up this Rosachu called Chrysel Rosachu who was supposed to be Chris's destined wife and then they would like I, and at least one occasion they had a call with her where they pretended that they had Chrysel and she was being tortured and they ha and Chris had to do stuff to like avert that and they so these are the kind of tactics that they used and they used it to they basically just convinced Christine of a whole bunch of crazy shit was going on in like other dimensions, which Christine fully believes in as being real. Were you gonna ask a question? I was gonna ask like, how much is Chris really uh, convinced by these arguments, or perhaps some of it's kind of just the enjoyment of playing along with a performative art piece in real life. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. I think I think that's an open question. Mm -hmm. um, Chris later, okay. Chris later realized that the Idea Guys were trolls. They were bad, they were fucking with her. Mm. Nevertheless, she continues to believe many of the things that they convinced her of. Mm. I kind of think just because she liked them. Because I think she liked... Because they... 
they are the ones that introduced this whole hyperdimensional Neptunia CPU goddess stuff mm. uh, behind the scenes. But I think Christine just liked it, so she stuck with it. I, they are the ones that I think uh, convinced her. They, they, Chris already believed in like this multiversal theory of like, oh, cartoons could be real in an alternate universe. But they like solidified this image of the dimensional merge, which we'll talk about in the next issue. Um, and I think she just kind of is into it. So the idea guys, oh, and also the idea guys are bad because they straight up just like, they use their influence to just extort money out of Chris. They got her to like buy Amazon gift cards and GameStop gift cards and stuff. They extorted like $6,000 out of her. Whoa! Yeah. 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 I think after the first 5000 you'd raise a few questions. <laughs> well, where but... did Chris get $6,000 to be mm. extorted? I mean, this was over a period. Yeah. So I guess it was just like from her like, like government pension or from mm -hmm. like her mom's like the pension that they get from uh, from their from Robert after he died. Yeah. yeah, I'm not exactly sure where the money comes from, but but um, somehow somehow they got it. That's shitty. Yeah, it's really it's really shitty. The idea guys were really bad. They were they were not out. Some, I mean, some of the stuff that got into the book because of them is pretty funny, but mm. at the end of the day, they were, they were bad, they were bad dudes. Alright. Corn pop. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So, anyway. So, issue 13. Um, well, mm, nah. Actually, before I talk about issue 13, let me just mention that there was another... Issue 15 was started around this time, and issue 15 was basically... I know Chris, Chris said she wouldn't retell the story, but she started basically remaking issue zero. Like, the story from the beginning is a, a more detailed retelling of, like, the origin of Sonichu and all that. And what issue... and it's not done, it was never colored or anything, there's like 50 pages. Uh, issue 15 is... it's, you know, it's got all the stuff about uh, the Chaos Emeralds and Sonichu and the rainbow and the eggs, but it, like, incorporates more of, like, the stuff that Chris would add to the lore later on. Mm. Like, uh, she specifies how many eggs there are, talks about more of, of them. She, t she has Magi-chan show up and talk about, like, basically Magi-chan introduces Chris to Sonichu and talks about the Anchuan Prophecy and talks about, uh... How, how it talks about multiple dimensions and the merge and stuff, and 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 that's all involved. Also, Magic Chan just shares some some information. There's a like a oh, also Sonichu, your parents were gassed to death uh, by by Team Rocket. Uh, a, co a coughing's gas just killed them. Oh wow. God! By the way, in case you wanted to know, <laughs> fucking sucks. As dude. a Pikachu, so two like Raichu or Pikachu parents or something. Yeah. Yeah. So, so basically, it includes more details that Chris came up with later. Mm. Um, and also, a lot of it is just stolen from a fan comic, hmm. or maybe oh. I don't know if you'd call it stolen or if. Chris was just like incorporate. I don't think she did it with the artist's permission, but this this fan artist made this comic called Rosa Chu's Story, which is like a more detailed version of the story from Rosa Chu's perspective, and it's got Rosa Chu's parents in it and stuff, and more dialogue between Rosa Chu and Kel. And a lot of issue fifteen is just lifted from that. Mm. So I guess Chris liked it and was like, "Yeah, yeah, I'll go with that. That's canon now." I forget the name of the character, but there was another character back in the beginning of the lecture where it's like it was taken from another. Oh, Simon. Fan Simon Chu. Oh wait. Yeah. Were these fan creations created facetiously? Like, was Simon Chu or Rose Chu's story? Was that like a I'm gonna make a parody of Simon Chu, or was it like a genuine fan of Simon Chu? I want to make a labor of love for this IP, which I cherish. How is the art in Rose Chu's story? Rose Chu's story has good art. Mm. It's okay. Uh, I think that Simon Chu was kind of a joke. Like, someone was like, haha, my fan Simon Chu is Simon the Driller from Gurren Lagann. Lol. Uh, Epic. Uh, I, Rosa Chu seems like a labor of love. Like, the artist seems to, like... I haven't really read all of it or anything, but, like, from the little bits I've seen, she seems... Like, she thinks it's funny. Like, she knows that, like, Simon Chu is a, is a bad webcomic. Uh, but I think she did... Maybe it was, like... You know, but this could be a compelling story, and I think she was like, "What if I, what if I retold the 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 story, but like kind of like made it good?" The fact that yeah. a like a person with a like competent hand who can draw well, according to you, this is what would, it looks like. 
Yeah. Looks good. Yeah, no. Looks good. Could, could could like see Sonic yeah, Chew yeah, and think like there's there's something to be done here, you know? We we can make this work. As with yeah. many things, I'm sure this rides the line. Yeah. Awareness of how ridiculous it is, but with some she, genuine love. All this love's been poured into it, yeah. you know? Yeah. 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 So I, I think my plan. apparently when someone told her that Chris had just like just like stolen it and put it she, I, I guess she said like, yeah, that's what I would expect. Yeah. Like <laughs> not not that surprised. Mm -hmm. So she knows. She knows. Okay. Um Anyway, that's issue 15. It's not that important in the grand scheme of things. It, re it just reiterates a lot of information that we've gotten <clears> since <throat> then. Alright, so issue 13, this is when... I mentioned the idea guys before because in between 12.9, like the CPU stuff was already starting to seep in, but in between 12.9 and 13, the idea guys really got their hooks into Chris and like, shit gets fucked. <laughs> It's lit. Yeah. It's oh, fire, yeah. okay? I didn't write any of this stuff on here um, because there's just too much. So I'm just going to rattle off some stuff that happens in issue 13. I'm just going to read you my notes. Um, and I, uh, uh, all right. Um, Strap in, boys. So C Christine finds out that her dream cast is magic. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of anime oh, bullshit. Uh, uh, the CPUs, this, this guy called John contacts her and is like, hey, Chris. Show me your 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 Dreamcast. I think it's magic. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this? John was the character of one of the idea guys. Mm. Um, John is sort of. Yeah, I'll, I'll mention him again. Um, Count Graduan attacks Quickville. The CPU gods from Hyperdimensional Neptunia all convene to fight him off. Sanchu, Chris's car, the Autobot, mm. Mm. Uh, transforms and leads a battle <laughs> into the country of game, in game industry, which is the setting of Hyper Neptunia. Mm -hmm. Uh, Silvana Rosichu does recon in the war effort. Uh, Akan, Akan, which is I guess is a villain from Neptunia, kidnaps Silvana. Graduan ends up signing a peace treaty with Chris because she, they want to retrieve Silvana. This might be before this point because I no no Silvana was good. Silvana had become good, but I guess Graduan still liked her, so they signed a peace treaty with Chris, and now they're allies or something. Uh, a time vortex opens. It throws Christine and Sonichu back in time. Sonichu lands in Africa, but Doc Brown from Back to the Future brings him back to the country cooking in Quickville. <laughs> in this timeline, in this alternate timeline they landed in, the United States lost the Cold War, oh. and Russia rules the world. Hillary Clinton won the election in 2016, but she got really sick and Putin took over. No! <laughs> no. Ian, Ian, Brand, Ian Brandon Anderson becomes the sheriff of Quickville. Brendan Fraser becomes the new mayor. <laughs> Chris, of, Chris of this timeline was possessed. This is this is back. Um, this is in like the year two thousand. So this is back. This is male Chris at the time, and he is possessed by Satan. Um, oh. In in this timeline, uh, okay. da, 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 da. he revokes all women's rights in Quickville. Oh, no. And he banishes Megan Schroeder. This is after the girl that he wanted to go on the yeah. trip to Seattle with, and da 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 da. He banishes her. She ends up becoming like a scarlet CPU goddess. She becomes a goddess in her own right, but like he banishes her. Um, the Sailor Scouts are involved. Uh, <laughs> um, Nightstar, the pony, takes evil Satan possessed 2000s Chris DNA mm. and clones him in the mirror pool, the one from the Pinkie Pie episode. Yeah, Too many yeah, Pinkie yeah. Pies. Um, so an army of evil, satanic, lust addled Chris's. Oh, no. no. Swarm across Equestria. Oh, no. Presumably having their way with the ponies. Oh. I mean, he specifically points out that they are lustful, so yeah, I can only this imagine. This is the greatest story. <laughs> <laughs> so, so all these evil Chris's just swarm over Equestria. Equestria has to be completely evacuated. Oh, God. Uh, um, of EQ. Satan, Satan possessed, er, the, the original Satan possessed Chris gets kidnapped and becomes a Nazi. No! <laughs> yes! Yes! Uh, uh, he, like, like an SS officer, like yes. a classical Nazi? Well, he joins the park. Okay. I don't know okay. if he's like an officer or anything. Okay. Um, he, right. he gives Hitler the Sonichu medallion. No! 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 Yes! Oh, oh, oh. Original, original Chris goes back. He prevents Satan-possessed Chris from getting kidnapped, so he converts okay. Chris to Islam instead oh. to remove the satanic possession. <laughs> Another right. Sonichu medallion, because he made, uh, he made, uh, he made three Sonichu medallions. One of those had to be sacrificed in order to remove Satan. But there's one 
that remains, and it gets intercepted by North Korea. <laughs> <laughs> so Kim Jong-un, I, I guess he also has the uh, medallion. Chris reveals, uh, Christine, the original Christine from our timeline, reveals that she and her father, Robert, they were actually not born human. They also were eggs. Sonichu eggs mm. that were that emerged from the rainbow. They are what we later he will, uh, Chris, Chris will later call special Sonichus. These are the Sonichus, the sixty nine uh, Sonichu eggs that emerged from the rainbow, and their families. Which I don't know. I get that would sort of imply that every Sonichu is a special Sonichu. But she says the original eggs from the rainbow and their families are special Sonichus, and those have special properties that will be important later. Um, uh, da, 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 da. The residents of Quickville all become satanic slash atheist. <laughs> Angelica Rosechu converts to Islam. Then Satanism. Blake joins ISIS. <laughs> <laughs> Wild Sonichu starts growing weed and dealing meth. <laughs> Bubbles identi- Bubbles. This Rose is just sound like the road to Rad Comic. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Bubbles Who starts. Was a derivative work? <laughs> Bubbles starts to identify as a muscly black male. Mm. Chris respond. Chris says. Fair. <laughs> Punchy is in an insane asylum and hates fat people. Mm. <laughs> Big one. Rosa Chu is trans. She is a trans woman. She was born with a penis mm. and testicles. And remember, this was the thing that Chris hated more than anything else was when people would draw fan art of Rosa Chu with a penis. Yeah. Nothing offended yeah. him more. But somehow, I guess through whatever coercive methods they use, the um, times have changed. Yeah, the the uh, the uh, the idea guys got Chris uh, very hesitantly, and like she she writes Chris writes that like she's like in distress. She says like it's like crying emojis, and she's like this disturbed me so much, like I couldn't believe it. Like this is like the worst thing. Like I hated to do this, but I have to admit, yes, it's true. Rosa Chu was born male. She's a trans. Whoa. She's a male Rosa Chu. Why does she hate to admit it exactly? Like, why is this so? I think it, I think it's because she fought so hard against the idea in the past. I okay. think she's just like really stuck on this idea. Like, no, Rosa Chu is a natural born woman with ovaries, a vulva, and etc. <laughs> no, uh, did, we'll did, did Rosa Chu transition before or after evolving from a Raichu? Actually, actually, that goes into. Oh fuck, I kind of forget. They go into it in issue fifteen. That's one of the details okay. that's changed. I think. I think she was already trans before the the, the Rosa Chu evolution, but I don't actually remember. Okay. I don't remember. Yeah. I'm gonna bet that they they probably convinced Chris that it would somehow be hypocritical to not also make Rosa Chu trans, like because of the fact that Chris had had such a strong opinion about it in the past. They probably bullied her, like, how can you pot, like, you know. How can you truly make? A, how can you truly stop being a hypocrite unless you put a dick on Rosa Chu? You know. I. Mm. I think That's the argument I would use if I was trying to convince Chris to do that, because it seems like it'd be very easy it's, to win that it battle. Seem, it seems, like, people have said that, like, um, because Chris draws, because, you know, in later generations of, of Pokemon, Raichus and Pikachus have differently shaped tails based oh, on their gender. Yeah, yeah. And the, people have, people had said before that Chris draws Rosichu with a pointed tail. Oh, which, so is, which is which is a male Raichu then. tail. Yeah. That oh, might have, oh. it seems to me like maybe they, they... Yeah. Mounted evidence, and we're like, Chris, you must confront this. Mm. This is the biological truth. You cannot avert your Chris eyes. Is, Chris is nothing if not someone who will listen to evidence. It's <laughs> definitely on I, some level true. Somehow they got her. They got her to listen, and she. What evidence is considered true or false might be, you know, unpredictable. Mm. But she will I, listen to evidence. I I know that she had, <clears throat> actually, I she had gone back in like previous chapters and. Changed Rosa Chu's tail, and like they're like you, in some uploads of them, you can see that she added like a rounded end and like erased the the point. But I guess she decided like nah, nah. Anyway, so she admits that it's very hard for her, but she does it. Sonichu and Rosa Chu. Um, I don't know why this is here, but okay. By the way, issue thirteen is very it's very text heavy. Like most pages will be like. There'll be like a couple of panels on the side, just kind of showing like disconnected images, and then just like most of the page is just like blocks of text. It's It'll just, look like this board. Yeah, it's, it'll be like this much will all be text, and then it'll be like image, 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 and and that'll be that's how it goes. Um, Sonichu and Rosichu met by the river, made out in sewage, 
and role played as hockey players. <laughs> oh, what? Silvana, hmm. excuse me. Silvana is deleted from existence. Oh. Christine goes on a date with blank, who is like I think is a troll. Uh, it's this girl, and this girl really likes um, like Ayn Rand, and like <laughs> <Sick>. <laughs> and, and there's some other authors, but I forget. Um, oh, and she 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 loves Trump, and she loves Ayn Rand. She tells Chris to get a job. Chris says she can't. Uh, jams to Sonichu. J DJ Jams to Sonichu is accused of sexual assault no. uh, by Punchy. Tails and Bionic back him up. They witnessed it. Overwhelmingly, the evidence says, yes, Jamsta is guilty. But Christine just can't believe it. So she prays for divine intervention and, uh, and, gets, pun and gets Jamsta off the charges, gets a not guilty verdict. Okay. Des despite overwhelming evidence. What, what a strange... What, what, so, so this character just allowed this obviously guilty sexual predator <laughs> yeah. via the force of Allah to be acquitted, and that's, like, good. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm not sure, I'm not sure if it's good or not. These are just these are just facts. complex moral questions. Yeah. Bunchy. These are just facts that are listed as yeah. these things happened, and there's no like further elaboration on. Them. Oh, so, so this isn't like art like rendered in like panel of like storytelling. It's just like fact, fact, fact. This is this page. is basically just like here's a whole paragraph of things happening. So clearly, the idea guys just said, Chris, go write these things in as just can and just bang them out. There was no like craft needed to produce it. There's on the de there's definitely like. You can definitely tell that Chris just wanted to, like, felt the need to just get yeah. all this information down in the comic, okay. in whatever form was most expedient. Mm -hmm. um, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, there, uh, buh, buh, buh. She, she prays and gets a not guilty verdict for Jamsta. Someone leaves some poo on the border between Quickville <laughs> oh, and no. Austro Latina. Uh, there's a, on the border. The war breaks out. <laughs> <laughs> wild and wild Sonichu and Simone La Rosichu, their treehouse and tunnels are destroyed in the war. All Autobots and Decepticons are destroyed. No, except, oh, yeah, Sonichu. Oh. Except for Son, except for Sonichu, oh. his head survives. Oh. Dang, Michael Bay. Uh, she editorializes. Um, Chris creates creates a person, I guess, called Battery Charge Heart, Miss Anirba Saffron Chandler. And she is a CPU goddess of some sort, and I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. The uh, Australatinians take over West Quickville. The CPUs control East Quickville. The Russians leave, but the Nazis arrive. <laughs> the Nazis <laughs> seek to no. wipe out Pokemon, including Sonichus. They see the Pokemon as genetically inferior. They are subhuman. Mm. The Nazis are gonna they're gonna kill them all. Since Silvana was deleted, Magic Chan hooks up with Mewtwo. Um, remember. Magichan was shat out of the rainbow, he hatched, and then Mewtwo, like, telepathically, like, mentored him. Mm. Like, taught him how to use the psychic powers. So Mewtwo's basically like his adopted dad. Yeah. And now they're married. Um, oh. <laughs> it's big. That's an odd power dynamic. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the Nazis capture most of the Sonichus. No! Simo yes. <laughs> Simone, they put them in fucking camps and they cut off their tails. Oh! Whoa! Yeah. Simonla is mutated in a Pokemon PC transfer, and oh. they burn her alive with flames. No! Chris tries to get in the way, but it doesn't work. She tries to like dodge in front and like block the flames, but for some reason she's like ethereal. I think because mm. of like time, she's like still in the time void or something, and it doesn't work. She can't block the fire. Oh. Uh, Simonla dies again. Uh, Chris, uh, Chris, Chris realizes. She realizes that all of her past communications with God and Jesus were actually just Akan, the villain from CPU stuff, uh, messing with her. Chris renounces Christianity once and for all. She now worships the CPU pantheon. Dawaj Naring, Dawaj Naring, Zaraz Jezniji, Zaraz Sienizji, Boo 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 Boo, Anu Chiki Briki, Davai Davai. I don't know what that means, but th that's in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Equestria's Chris. Clones all... Okay, yeah, the, the, the rampant, uh, uh, lustful Chris clones overrunning Equestria, they, they, they all melt from napalm. I guess the Nazis, like, napalm them and they all melt. Uh, CPUs drive the Nazis out. It turns out... Okay, here's the thing about the special Sonichus, the ones that came out of the rainbow. The special Sonichus, they don't actually die. They are all reborn from new eggs. So, like, if you were one of the special Sonichus, and, you know, if you're Silvana, and you die, 
uh, you just a new egg appears where you hatched on the moon in in this case, and you just hatch out. And you have all your memories, you're just reborn as a baby, but you have all your memories, and so you're basically immortal. Mm. So that's pretty sick. Um, uh, Air Wilhelm Strasse leads an ambush on the CPUs. I guess it's a Nazi. It was a Nazi guy. Chris and the CPUs begin eradicating the Nazis. Any Nazi that calls Christine Herr instead of fr Air instead of Frau gets mm -hmm. doused in Chris's blood Whoa. and dissolved in, into goo. Oh. Melted. Like Chris's blood. I don't like this. This uh, Discord, like the from My Little Pony, mm. gives every Nazi in Equestria a fatal heart attack, <laughs> uh, oh. and then he erects a okay. barrier around all of Equestria the to, wall? Keep, to keep the Nazis out. Build, build the, the wall. wall. Build, build the, the wall. wall. Damn. Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Discord. He like becomes the sun, and then he just gives every. So so Equestria is safe. There's no more Nazis in Equestria. Everyone. They've all had a heart attack. Um, and then, in what Christine describes as an epic fail, all, rema <laughs> all remaining Nazis in Quickville are tainted with Chris's blood, and they become Sonichus themselves. Oh. And, they, and they, they see Sonichus as impure and, and subhuman. So this is an epic fail for the Nazis that they're all Sonichus now. Oh, right. They return to Germany and disband the Reich. <laughs> CPUs force uh, the CPU forces demolish all Nazi slash four cent garbage fortresses. They liberate all captured Sonichus, including Nightstar. She is also a Sonichu, remember? Right. Uh, and they, they, they had cut their tails off, but they, they heal their tails with like super Sonichu magic. Um, Robert Chandler and Ted Bundy are reborn. Oh, that's Ted not good. Ted Bundy is also a special Sonichu. Oh. <laughs> they, Why? I don't know. The, the mass murder. Like, the, yes, the idea that, well, in the, he's like, no, 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 like, everyone, that was all fake. Like, mm. really, I, Ted Bundy, was not a mass murderer. I'm a good boy. I was framed. Mm. I'm a patriot. And I'm back. Ted, just admit it. <laughs> he's, he's, he, he's he admitted good. it right before he died. No, he's good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he's fine. Um, Hitler gives a speech in West Quickville. And as he's giving the speech, he transform all not the, this, the blood thing happens, and they all transform into sonic shoes. I feel like Chris already said that, but I guess she says it twice. Um, they all transform into sonic shoes. Does Hitler uh, also transform into a sonic shoe? Yes, okay. and then they all die. <laughs> <laughs> Only about 100 low-ranked human Nazis remain. <laughs> Roberta Sonichu, um. Roberta Sonichu, that's Robbie. Uh, Sonny mm. uh, gives birth to three female Sonnies. Uh, Rosie, as in Sonichu's wife, yeah. gives birth to three male Rosies. Uh, Magic Chan has a mental breakdown <laughs> uh, from the stress. This is partially caused by the stress of 30 years of scanning Quickville to make sure no one's having gay sex. Yeah. Because, because Magic Chan is also gay, and that's why he's with Mewtwo now. And I guess this caused some cognitive dissonance, which really stressed him out. And now he has a psychic break. Surely he, he must have stopped scanning for gay sex at some point. Yeah, okay. I, but I think so. Okay. But I think this is like the ultimate timeline version of him, where Chris mm. was satanic and oh, stayed okay. evil. I, I think the implication here is supposed to be that like pre-transition Chris, like old Chris, who said all that, like he was evil. He was possessed by Satan. Mm. This is sort of like new Chris fighting against old Chris, in a way. Okay. I feel like there's a, there's a theme there. Um, so, a tear in, opens in the noosphere, in the sky. Uh, Christine uses all her power, just like, like, ancient power, megastone power. Um, did I mention she got megastones? No, but... At some, at some point over here, um, I don't remember. The Sonichu crystals all combine. And then they shatter into Sonichite, which is the mega stone that lets Sonichus become mega. So she uses she uses all these power ups at once, and she becomes the super angelic evolved form of Sonichu. <laughs> Closes the rift in the noosphere. CWC is like Magic Chan. I'm very disappointed in you. You you. Yeah? Um, is this a visual now, or is it all just text blocks? Now? now now it's like pages of text with like one image of like. Now it's like, it's Christine and Magic Chan talking. Because I want to see what that looks like. Super mega hyper <gasps> I would show you. It'll be. I'll have. Okay. I'll have put yeah, it on the yeah. screen. But yeah, mm. it's it's weird. Sure. Uh, <laughs> it's it, it looks kind of like colossal Chris Chan, mm. but with like a halo and it's purple and the like 
The circles on the cheeks are like flaming hearts, um, mm -hmm. angel wings, three halos, etc. Um, Christine berates Maggie Chan. She's like, Maggie Chan, how could you? You went crazy and you opened a hole in the noosphere. All of your Alakazams are dead. These are, they were helping you to scam the city to help keep, keep these are like cop Alakazams. Mm -hmm. They're all dead now. They died because you fucked up and it really sucks and you didn't do a good job at your job and people are dead because of you and you destroyed the ancient prophecy you went to the ancient prophecy and you like fucked it up in the past to change things and then in the present you destroyed it and you did this out of jealousy because it said that I Christine Weston Chandler your creator was meant to marry another faded person uh, a faded wife and you were jealous about that and so you did all this shit and it was really bad is that and true? It, and it's not cool it's totally true okay all of this is accurate <laughs> and um and then she's like but you know I know I made you do all that scanning I know I am really stressed you out making you scan for for gay people and, I, and I'm sorry about that <laughs> so really it's my fault mm -hmm. I should have been more attentive mm -hmm. to your needs Magic Chan I apologize please forgive me and yes I will marry you <laughs> Hooray! Yay! So they get married. Um, what about his destined love? Well, that's fine because Magician is also already married to Mewtwo because he because he married Mewtwo because Silvana Rosichu was erased from existence. But now Silvana's back, so Magician is also married to Silvana Rosichu. And now Chris Chan is gonna get married to Magic Chan, but also Chris Chan is gonna marry his, his her faded wife, Chrysel Rosedew, the one that the idea guys pretended they were torturing on the phone. Mm. So now they're in this big five-way polyamorous marriage, okay. Okay. and it's way cool, and everyone's down, mm. super good. Yeah, this is this is that's it. <laughs> that they're all they all get married. What a whopper! <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the end. Um, so meanwhile. <coughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hold your horses. <laughs> so meanwhile, <laughs> so meanwhile, Sonichu is going on a mass shooting spree. At the no, oh balls. no! <laughs> <laughs> How long is this issue? It's it's pretty long, but remember, this is all text. Or almost all yeah. text. Yeah, I, I, I want to believe it's a transcribe. Like you're reading basically the like the meat. I'm, the I'm reading like a mom. condensed version. Yeah, I, I just like I just. Like, I knew this was not going to fit on here, so I just ripped, like, this was all too good to, like, not mention, so here, this is just rapid fire. Um, so, Sanchu's at the mall, he's got a gun. <laughs> why? Why? So, I'll What's, tell you okay. why. Raise your hand. Um, it's because this is, I think this is, like, our original timeline Sanchu. He's gone back, this is in the alternate timeline where Chris was evil and satanic, and he thinks that the CPUs have brainwashed Christine. He mm. thinks the CPUs are bad guys, but Christine shows up and is like, no, no, <clears throat> no, no, it's not an issue. The CPUs are good. They didn't brainwash me. I sh I'm sorry, Sonic you. Uh, my son. Um, let's make out. And then they do. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> I don't understand. Quote, I promise I will have sex with you later, Sonic <laughs> <laughs> But now there are, there is business to attend to. Uh, we have we have rights we must wrong, and Sonic says no. Now <laughs> <laughs> Because he has been infected with past evil Chris's sin of lust. The sin of lust, the same thing that made him attack Equestria in an army of, of, of lust clones. Oh no. Um, but it's okay, right? So Sanchu, he is going to commit rape. But No, yeah. no, but, no, no. It's not worth it. But <laughs> it's fine. Because Are you sure Christine, with future sight, she sees that if she like dodges left, he'll get her in a hold and he'll mm. he'll do it. But she's like, okay, so I'll just, I'll, I'll zag instead. <laughs> and, and I'll get, and I'll get behind him with my quick speed, and then I'll punish him. And she does it, and she sticks her hand up his butt, and holds him up like a puppet. Why? And it's like, Whoa. okay, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, okay, everyone. <laughs> Once you hit that horn. Hit that horn. <laughs> Look, I don't want you to see what I'm about to do to him. No. Don't want you to see what I'm no. about to do. I don't want to see either. To my, to my son, Sonichu. So no. let's just skip ahead a while. 
Don't worry about it. What did oh, she do? No. Wait, did she Punish him. rape him? No. So, I mean, that is a rape. That's, that's, a, yeah. Yeah. that's already sexual assault, oh, no doubt. My God. Look, these wow. are just the facts. I, pre I present them that's to you like, with that. That's judgment. like something new that's worse than a rape. <laughs> <laughs> no one's discovered yet. A final note mentions that, mm -hmm. by the way, <laughs> the national anthem of Quickville is Aretha Franklin's Think. Oh, Think. <laughs> Think about what you're trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Why not? And then they have a wedding. <laughs> uh, and then there's an epilogue where she talks about the idea, guys. She says that now, by the way, I am also a CPU goddess of the Commodore console. Mm. Okay. And says that the Commodore company must make a new console in order to stop Ray uh, from doing whatever. Ray? Who's Ray? I don't know. She's just getting. She's some villain okay. character. It's starting to a little Just bit. Just now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, any oh, questions? A lot. Yeah. A fucking lot. <laughs> well, stare at you. Okay. Uh, just a quick one. Um, how did the idea guys get in on, on all this? That's like, the mystery. Uh, I don't know exactly. I, I think there is... I think I there mean, are. How hard could it be if you decided you wanted to fuck with Christian? Yeah. Well, Chris but is they, very. They did quite a lot. Chris, Christine is very. I don't. I don't know. They were. But these lights are buzzing. This is mm. a cricket. It's not cricket, the light. Crickets outside. There's, really? Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> hmm. I mean, Christine was very paranoid and was very like protective and wouldn't like talk to people she didn't know. I don't know how they did it. Hmm. Maybe there are transcripts that explain it in more detail. But somehow they convinced it. I think. They, like, I think they... I mean, you, you say that, but, like, Chris is, like, on social media now, <clears throat> all over yeah. Twitter, like, pretty easy to get a hold of. It's <clears throat> that, evidenced by the fact that you've done so. That's true. Yeah, so she's... maybe it's just, like, the shifting towards any, social media. Yeah, any anyone can just talk to her now. She's just publicly out there on Twitter and stuff. I don't know, maybe they... I imagine... I, I think because they... I think it's because they told her stuff that she liked. Like, the Dimensional Merge stuff, the CPU Gata stuff. Like, this is all very much in her wheelhouse. So I think they just, I think she grew to like and trust them because she liked the things they were saying, and then they used that hold over her to convince her. They, like, convinced her that there was a laser on the moon that was pointed at Quickville, I think, and I think they had, she had to give them money in order for it not to go off and destroy them. Um, yeah, I, great. yeah, it was, it was, oh, damn it. yeah, it was a, it's a little, little base, but mostly cringe. Mm. Um, mm. As fucking lit as all that was, I'd give it all up to save Chris from this bullshit. Yeah, it's a shame. It's a shame. Um, well, it sounds like most of it's gonna be at retconned anyway, right? What's about to happen? Yeah, uh, more or less. Well, okay, so let me skip to... The Sonic 2 Special 5 is just one page, and it's a page that shows Chris takes her, her Amnifest ring, the, uh, the class ring that, like, in previous issues was alluded to contain like most of her power and she um she like absorbs like 99.99% of its power into her and then she gives it to this guy who, who is called the captain and um all the sonic shoes are in the back and they look sad and she's like here take take care of this take care of the ring captain and he's like thank you Arr. <laughs> he's like thank you Christine you provide a valuable service to the world mm. and what this is, is that, like, the, basically the idea guys forced Chris to sell the ring. And she was really sad to do it. In real life. Yes, in real life. So she drew this comic to be like, okay, but I absorbed most of its power. So, like... Okay. But the guy who bought it was this guy called the Captain, who was, like, part of the quickie, I think. He was, like, a, he was like a troll. He was, like, an, an anti-troll. There were some... There were some people called... I think they were called the Guard Dogs. And, like... Basically, a couple of people went and sprung into action when they found out about these idea guys. They were like, no, nah, we gotta put a stop to this. And this was one of those guys. He bought the ring so that some random person wouldn't get it. And then he later, like, sold it back to her. Oh, Presum nice. Presumably for the same price that he bought it for. Good. Um, yeah, so this was like... There are good people in the world still. Yeah, but this was her... She had to sell her ring and she... But I think... I read on the quickie, and I, I don't have evidence, but... Someone claimed that apparently he gave it back to her and he, he, he told her that it was the, oh fuck, it was called, he called it the, the something stone? I don't know. He, 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 call, he said like, this is like a magic stone and with it you can revert all the weird shit that the idea guys did. Hmm. And I think it's implied that like, yes, 
partially because of this stone or partially because of like she just went back in time and fixed the timeline. Um, issue number four begins with a recap, a little bit of a recap about the CPU goddesses and stuff and basically says like all the really bad shit that happens in 13 has been erased. Like it's fine. Everything's fine now. Mm. <clears throat> um, so she goes into detail about the dimensional merge. She talks about, and this is again, this is mostly text. 13 and 14 are both, like, very light on the illustrations. She talks about the dimensional merge. She talks about, in case you don't know, um, basically Chris believes that our dimension is called 12... Eight, there are infinite dimensions. We live in a dimension called 1218-1218, and that there is a, another world called C197 in which all fictional characters exist, or most fictional characters exist. And so, like, cartoon characters and all that. Like, Bugs Bunny and fucking... Uh, Naruto, they all live in C-197. And Chris believes that our dimensions are merging. And that at some point in the future, we will begin to see these characters. And, and in some cases, we can already kind of see through the veil. And like, and like everyone, everyone's OCs will become real when the dimensions merge. And Chris's like psychic powers and her magic powers, her Sanji powers, those will all become fully manifested in the real world when the dimensions combine into one. And also, later on, Chris will say that, like, if you, if you like, are not prepared for the merge, you might die in it. Like, there will be casualties. Mm. Like, this is going to be somewhat of a cosmic cataclysm. Mm. But also, it's going to be based, because, like, you can meet... Uh, Lisa Simpson. Lisa, you can meet Lisa yeah. Simpson, who will be president in 2020. Right. Oh, that's coming right up. Yeah. Finally. I, I just want to point out how Chris is, like, really about this dimensional merge. Like, on Twitter, this is what Chris tweets about. It's like... Any weird changes that she sees in like the city she lives in is like the dimensional like more evidence the dimensional merge is happening because this like fun ruckers closed down and now <laughs> yeah, 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 something yeah. else, yeah. you know. Yeah, Chris is like um Chris is Chris is claiming now that like it's it's already happening. Uh, Magi Chan has already come through the, the, the barriers between worlds, has nice. already come to our twelve eighteen. Um, she put pictures of, like, videos that had Magic Chan in the background, like, oh, there he is, oh, he's really fast, though, so it only caught him on one frame. And it's very amusing to see some of these guys. There'll be a screenshot, like, from a live stream of some people that she's watching and enjoying, and she's like, at this moment, and she will provide the time code to go, look, I went and looked at the time code. I went through each frame. <laughs> he's too fast. I, I couldn't detect Magic Chan, but I guess I don't have the magic touch. He's, he's much too fast. I guess so. It is worth noting, we are sitting in a room with Gino, a fictional character. Yeah. So there might be something to this. Yeah. Well, has the power to grant wishes. Gino I might is, add. I mean, yeah, Gino is real. Mm -hmm. So why not Magic Chan? And a full and, member of the yeah. PCP. <laughs> What's to stop Lisa Simpson from getting elected? Why not Lisa Simpson? Why Why not anything? Mm -hmm. um, Professor. Why not Zoidberg? I think this is a load of malarkey, and I would be very surprised if Magichan were to fly by any video for a single frame, especially a video such as this one, the viewers are watching at home, oh, right what? now. What? No. What? That would never happen. I, I think I saw something. No, I, can't I, didn't, see right. I didn't see anything. It's very... It's, 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 you, quit, day, quit day, daydreaming and dilly-dallying. You! Believe in yourself. <laughs> Believe in miracles. <laughs> Believe in miracles. That's what I need, I think. <laughs> uh, magic is a lot like love. Mm. It's all a feeling. And it, it fills, fills the room from the floor to the ceiling. ceiling. Woo! Okay, <laughs> cool. Uh, glad we got that figured out. Mm. So, um, right, she talks about the dimensional merge. And then a lot of the, this is her journal, basically, of her trip to BronyCon. In 2019, uh, which we were all at, or many of, of many of us were at, yep. um, she specifically talks about going to the um, analysis anarchy panel, uh, which I remember, just by coincidence, I and a bunch of us happened to be sitting like right behind her at, which mm -hmm. is just that's just happenstance. That's pretty funny. Also, analysis anarchy is a My Little Pony a Team Fortress 2 crossover series which my pony was also in the first episode of. Boy, it all comes together. Phantom the horn. threads of fate. The phantom horn was in there. The threads of fate just weave together. What a tangled web learn, they weave. Learn more about it in the real history of Brony's lecture over on DigiBro. Link in yes. the card up above. Or a description more like. Card's easier to click on, though. True. Do that. And also, I don't know how to use cards. I'll, I'll show you later. Show me, show me, sure. show me later. Um, okay. 
And okay, so basically this is just a, di a journal of Chris going to BronyCon and talking to all of the Brony famous people she wanted to meet and talking about how she would give them crystals and stuff. She just gave crystals to people as gifts. Um, 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 um. Oh, I kind of skipped something, but that's okay. It's not that big a deal. Anyway, before all that happens, um, she has a dream, and in her dream, she, she's like, um, she's like, she says she's falling out of touch with her goddess powers, but in her dream, uh, Magi-chan helps Christine access a special place in her subconscious mind that is like a doorway into this like room full of chairs, and it's like a, ch a, a meeting hall for gods and goddesses and deities and divinities, but there is a demon sitting in this in the throne in this room. The demon is called Jacoba, and Jacoba is a demon based on a real person named Jacob Sockness, mm. who is like a troll, kind of, who was like flirting with Chris on Twitter for a mm. while, and uh, he's very weird, and I don't like him. Um, but I guess he has a demon inside of him. <laughs> and and uh, he was sitting on his throne, but then Gary Stu and Mary Sue, Two ponies, who I think are characters from Analysis Anarchy, but I'm not 100% sure. Mm. It I, sounds like the kind of humor from Analysis it, Anarchy. Doesn't it? I think that, I, I feel like at the Analysis Anarchy panel, there was a, um, they showed, they debuted the new episode, and I think Gary Stu and Mary Sue were characters in it. Mm. They're like, whatever. But anyway, they, they drive Sockness off. The throne is empty again. Who will one day sit upon it? Who knows? Mm. All right, so I want to mention special, Sanji special number six. This was actually made before this one. And in this one, uh, Chris Chan and Magi Chan, they are, I, they go through the dimensional rift to the Rift Cafe, where all the Analysis Anarchy Pony, yeah. My Little Woo! Pony reviewers, <laughs> yeah. God. I've, I've been there. I've been it's, there. It's based. It's... We've all been. <laughs> uh, so they go to this the Rift. This is haunting. Yeah, right? <laughs> uh, they go to the Rift Cafe, and they talk to Dr. Wolf. And Dr. Wolf... I, I wish I had talked about a moment with Dr. Wolf in my lecture, but just to clarify, yeah. Dr. Wolf is a guy who does a show where he like like has other creators like Other sit on the, like a couch and like an like a it's like a, a drawings of him as a psych like a psychologist like talking to people on his couch but he writes these with people as like a legitimate attempt to like help kids with their psychological hangups it is super weird it's pretty weird it's it's pretty weird but chris is way into it um anyway i guess what happened early in 2019 or late 2018 is that Chris had been communicating with a bunch of these pony reviewers who he's a big fan of, she's a big fan of, and uh, he, they, the, they, the trolls had like fucked around in some way and gotten these people to block Chris. So Chris got blocked by all these people she was a big fan of, and she was very distraught about it, so she drew this special where Magic Chan goes to meet with Dr. Wolf, and he is like, oh, oh no, that's terrible to hear, and Magic Chan is like, yeah, doctor, it would, actually, it would make a really great moment with Dr. Wolf. Uh, uh, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, and then Magic Chan turns to the camera and he's like, you people, you gotta wake up. The merge is coming. You gotta connect with your OCs. You gotta, you gotta not misrepresent OCs. If you do, they'll be really mad. Oh, uh, no. uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna be bad. It's gonna be bad stuff. Um, let me see if there's anything else. Yeah. <laughs> Love your OCs, get ready for the merge, it's mm. coming. Mm. That's special six. Okay. We're almost at the end, right? Woo! So, uh, Sonichi special seven, right? Um, Sonichi special seven. So we need a preamble for this one. Yeah, uh, I'll try, not, I'll try to make it as simple as possible. Sonichi special seven are actually a series, they were not comics, they were drawn as illustrations for cards, for a card game, a My Little Pony card game that Christine was really into, is, is currently really into, called uh, Twilight Sparkle Secret Ship Fic, Ship Fic Folder. And, um, but they were, they were card illustrations, they had text in them explaining what was going on, and they are actually a part of my webcomic. I didn't mean for this to happen, but it happened. Uh, they are a part of my webcomic called Slime and Punishment. And Slime and Punishment is a comic that stars um, my pony guy who was in this fucking show, he was in there, Phantom Horn. He goes to the world of New Los Angeles City, aka Neil Milwaukee, the world of rowdy fuckers, cop killers. Woo! 
me and Munchie's fucking free text-based MMORPG playable entirely in your Discord server. That's the description. Join. If you want to play a game, if you think this guy's charming as hell, which I do, <laughs> click on that link and play a game that me and him made. With <laughs> link in the description. It's tight shit. I'll link to Slime and Punishment too. I won't go into the, the whole details of Slime and Punishment. But there's Slime is a central part of it. Yes. Yeah. Slime is a central part of it. Anyway, according to all... Because, okay. So I was doing this and it had Night Star in it. And Chris got wind of it and liked what she read. And so she drew these illustrations as cards to sort of nudge the story in a direction she wanted it to go. Mm -hmm. She had... Um, she had Chris Chan Sonichu comes to New Los Angeles City, aka Neo Milwaukee, to retrieve some slime for Nightstar. And it turns out that Nightstar's, this, this is where the slime that got in Nightstar's Eye of the Turning Green came from, um, and from Neo Milwaukee. And uh, so Phantom Horn and Strawberry Milk, his buddy, Hey ho. Hey. They get a slime sample to give to Nightstar. Nightstar develops a cure for slime, some a substance that can destroy slime. Uh, cure is the wrong word. Yeah, cure, cure is the wrong cure. word. Yeah. Cure. <laughs> these these people live on slime. It's their lifeblood. It's like curing super aids, which is the only thing keeping us all alive right now yeah. canonically. Yeah. yeah. So 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 uh so Chris Chan comes, brings the cure, it's a combination of bicarbonate soda, sugar, and water, and she gets all of the Sonichus, and all of the deities, and all of the superheroes of Dimension C197 together, and they bring a rainstorm of this bicarbonate soda rain, and they bring about the soda rain holocaust, mm -hmm. which by Chris's own estimation, kills 70,000 innocent slime people, uh, innocent slime boys of New Los Angeles City, aka New Milwaukee, and it was a big cosmic catastrophe, and time shenanigans occurred. And then later on, an alternate, an alternate version of Phantom Horn, Chris Chan appears again in the Time Void to bring him into the Alpha timeline. Uh, that's all you need to Things know. Things are getting read, read the comic. Anyway, that's Special Seven. It's the story. It's Chris Chan going to New Los Angeles City, aka Neo Milwaukee, and that's the last canonical uh, uh, story in the Sonichi universe that Chris has yet made. That's where we are right now. Lately, Chris is more interested in making cards for Twilight Sparkle's secret shipwick folder. Uh, sh she is just churning those out, selling box sets of them. Yeah, to clarify, like, physical copies. Like, she, there's yeah. some kind of site, I guess, that lets you print your own drawings onto cards. So it's like, the cards look legitimate, aside from the fact that it's got Chris Chan's art on it. Yeah. But she prints them and sells them. <laughs> There's, yeah, the, the people that made the game, they, they, provide, they, they closed, the company closed, but they provided resources. Like, they have templates that you can, you can make your own cards and you can get them printed yourself. You've you got to pay for the printing costs and mm. stuff. And, she, and she's trying to sell them, basically. Are you ever going to pay the money you owe Chris Chan? <laughs> Was it four hundred dollars? Yeah. Wait, why did I owe? Why did I owe Christine three hundred? His royalty. His royalty. Yeah, he royalty. cruelly stole her OCs. Oh, oh, profits from my free webcomic. That, Correct. That didn't know that I didn't make any money off of. Uh, no, I think she's forgiven me for that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's over it. Um, I don't know. That brings us up to now. Any any questions? Any lingering questions or anything that I didn't answer? Uh, Tom, you're part of this now. Yeah. You've gone from a passive observer to a very powerful figure I in the just, progression of the war. <laughs> I just wanted to draw, I just wanted to draw Nightstar getting slime in her eye, and I just wanted to draw... See, I thought it was funny if, like... I, I would much rather have Chris Chan involved with you than with those other guys. Agree. Agree. Agree hundred percent. Yeah. I'm not trying to fuck with anyone. I just thought it would be funny to draw like, hey, because I'm something of a Christorian, <clears throat> what if Phantom Horn, my pony OC, was like a Christorian for the Night Star version, so he's a Night Storian. Mm. And I was like, haha, and then what if she banished him to New Los Angeles City? <laughs> So I drew that. And then it became a like 200 page comic. And then, and then just Chris was like, hey everyone, cool fan comic, read it. And I was like, oh shit, I guess I gotta do more of that. Um, and, then, and then all this happened. Uh, what lies in store for the, I guess, the conclusion of Slime and Punishment and the future of oh. Sonichu? I, I haven't heard any like 
I mean, Slime and Punishment, I'm working on the finale. I'm working on the video finale. It will probably be out by the time this comes out. And well, it is great to link is, in the description. And it is canon. It is canon to Sanji. Chris has repeatedly said, yes, Slime and Punishment is Sanji canon. Read yes. it. Read my comic. Patreon.com slash Ben Sane. It's also a great introduction to what the fuck the game is in terms of, like, the lore of the game. Yeah. Yes. True. Play, new, play, play oh. Endless War. That's the game that is set. Link in the description. Link in the description. It is a cool text-based game. Join <laughs> Slime with Corp your today. Friends. Become a corporate tool. No, that's don't do that. To do. Trash. The lore is really convoluted, mm -hmm. and that's and that's just how I like it. <laughs> um, what was the question? Well, what about what lies in the future for Sonichu? Uh, well, I mean, let me see here. The last the last Sonichu that Chris had drawn was, I guess, it was either. Yeah, she she had drawn this this honestly pretty half-ass issue number fourteen. Like it's pretty short. There's mm -hmm. very few illustrations. It's mostly just text. It's mostly just it's uncolored. That was it, a while ago too. This yeah, this was in it was started in June 2019, mm -hmm. and then was left unfinished for I'm not sure how long. And then the last Sonichu that was made, um, at least what's available on the quickie, unless there's like privated stuff mm -hmm. somewhere, I'm not sure. But the last publicly available stuff was this Sonichi Special 7. And to my knowledge, she has not made any more of it since then, because she's making the Twilight Sparkle Secret Shitfic folder cards. Um, so, I mean, I assume Sonichi will continue at some point in the future. I don't know when. I'm uh, waiting uh, with bated breath. Maybe, maybe Christine will be shocked by the surprise twist ending of Slime and Punishment, and she will feel compelled to uh, create some more, create a response. Or maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. Did you? Uh, how, how do you feel about the people who, who think that you've, like, overreached by getting directly involved with Chris or something? Oh, mm. lol. Mm. Yeah. I get comments on the original video mm. being... Because, like, in that video I said, uh, uh, um, what's the phrase? The Star Trek? Prime Directive. Prime, yeah. Oh, Prime, yeah, yeah. Prime Directive. <laughs> Don't interfere. Mm. Right? And, like... With underdeveloped worlds. Okay. Yeah. I get... I get that, like, This is oh. clearly an overdeveloped <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh... But now you're now you're like involved in it. You disobeyed the prime directive. Mm -hmm. Well, kinda. But like back in the like in these days, in like 2009 previous, like in the time I was talking about then, the way that you would fuck with Chris is you would have to like find her phone number, call her on the phone, like send her a letter, go to her house, fuck with her in person. Like all I did was like respond to her tweets. All I did was like at her on social media. So I don't feel like it's the same thing. Uh, I was just, I was just having fun. I just wanted to tell a funny I, I, I story about only, ponies and slime, and that's think, what I did, goddammit. I don't think you approached her as, like, an underdeveloped civilization. You were like, no, I want, like, honest collaboration. Like, I meeting love this a meeting of No, I, I, no I just, I just, like, added her because she's a person on social media, and I made a thing about her character. And I was like, hey, check this out. And she liked it. I don't know if this is so true currently, but, like, over the last year or two, it's been interesting to see, I mean, I see the posts that Chris is making. Some of them are, like, worrisome, and it makes me concerned that, uh, specifically the stuff about the dimensional merger, like, being so certain that, like, the world's coming to an end, it makes me worried that she's not doing well. And I'm wondering what your take on is, if she's in a um, decent place? Has this all harmed I mean, her, put her in a uh, bad place? Does, has any of this ever made you think she was in a good place mentally? Well, I, I think mean, no. I but think it's impossible for all of this to have not harmed her somewhat. I agree. I, I agree. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Honestly, <sighs> she seems pretty content. Mm -hmm. She's like, I, the stuff she says about the dimensional merge does it have... It reads like an absolute maniac. Well, it does have kind of well, apocalyptic... Like variety it does, it does have kind of apocalyptic yeah. overtones to it. It does see there will be this cosmic catastrophe that will cause untold death. Mm -hmm. But Christine is totally chipper about it. She's really looking forward to it. When you see her in, like, videos, she does seem pretty chill and pretty relaxed. Yeah. But the text itself seems, as Twitter does, I guess it skews it I, to she, critical she, mass. She, we had a, me and her had a conversation on Twitch mm -hmm. where we talked about the merge and stuff. And she was, like, because we were talking about the comic, and she was, like, very... Cheerful. She seemed. She was like making jokes and just like doing silly voices and stuff. And um, I mean, when you see Lisa Simpson becoming president, things are looking rosy <laughs> for the future. She. I mean, I don't think. I mean, is the stuff she's saying these days maybe a little crazier than stuff she said in the past? Yeah, but like, I don't know. 
it doesn't seem, it doesn't alarm me. It doesn't seem like she's like gonna do anything crazy or like hurt herself or anything. She yeah. seems like pretty content about it all. Like she's just kind of doing her thing. And you know, trolls, trolls always, a lot of trolls have tried to like fuck with her under the guise of like, this is for your own good, right? Like I'm gonna like, like I'm not gonna like go along with your crazy shit. You know, I'm gonna like give you some tough love, right? I'm gonna teach it. I'm gonna make you like snap into reality, and you're gonna you're gonna get a job, and you're gonna you know do whatever. But like, I don't. I think a lot of people just kind of use that as an excuse to just sort of be cruel. Mm. And like mm. I, tough love has never worked. Like like so many trolls have tried that. Like they've tried to like blackmail her into like cleaning a room or like getting a job and stuff. None of it has done any good. Jordan Peterson calls her up on the phone. <laughs> Who are you gonna clean your room? So like if you're still doing that at this point, I think you gotta look at the facts and just be like, okay, people have tried that. No, it has not made Chris like snap to reality. It has not made her like, oh, like, oh man, I should really like, you know, get a job or whatever you think she should do. Uh, she's, she's just, at this point, I think we just have to accept Chris is just gonna do what she's gonna do. This is mm. this is this is what she's about. This is what she likes. This is how she's gonna be. And if she were gonna, if anyone were gonna like change her, or fix her, or do anything about it, it, it would have been done already. Uh, I, I just I wouldn't want to contribute because like a lot of this is probably somewhat done for fun and taking it too seriously seems like a mistake. Even if on Twitter like everything it could look intimidating or whatever, but yeah, I mean I, I agree. That seems to be true. I think Chris has fun with it. Yeah. I think she likes she likes it. She, I think to a certain extent she's like she wants she wants to be like this. Yeah. I mean yeah. that's just my She's not that's like just, hurting anyone. No. Obviously. No. I mean no, like, I don't why think wouldn't so. you just let her be? I that's how I feel. <sighs> okay, well that brings us up to date. Is any I'm happy to answer any more questions anyone's got. I love talking about this shit. Uh, <laughs> Good. You good? You good? At think, the end? I think we're okay, good. Okay, well, guess we're what? Done. You've all graduated from Sonic 2 102. Whoa. You're, now, you're now advanced Christorians like me. Oh my god. Yeah. 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 Your degrees are in the mail. Yay! Uh, 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 Time to go out and zap to the extreme. Time to zap to the extreme. What's your Patreon? <laughs> Patreon.com slash Ben Saint. <laughs> Woo! Yeah! <laughs> Oh yeah, I have comics on saintcomics.com. I'm a cartoon guy. I don't just make videos about Christian Weston Chandler. Uh, despite you also make comics about Christian Weston Chandler. Yes, and among others, but yes, it's true. This is your passion, but comics are your job. Yeah. <laughs> uh... <laughs> um, okay. Thanks for watching. Class dismissed. Let's go home, kids. Ugh.